Hello everyone, this is Professor Shyam Soni and I welcome you all to JK Shah online. So students, today we are going to revise economics for finance. Yes, students, it's a group 2 subject, paper 8B. So this subject is going to come along with your financial management. So paper 8A will be FM and paper 8B will be economics. So as you all know, this is completely a theory paper. But most of the times students have a doubt, sir, how to study, from where exactly we should study, how many points we are supposed to write, how to present the paper, everything will be answered in the whole session. So I request you all to please watch each and every video till the end. Because while explaining, while revising, I am going to mark certain important things, I may explain certain important things, I may highlight certain important things and I request you also do the same. So students, as you know, there are total four chapters in inter-CA economics. First is national income, second is public finance, third is your money market and fourth is international trade. So precise meaningful revision session we will be conducting and I am going to cover each and every question, numerical sums we will also discuss. So let us start with the first chapter that is national income. So this is our first chapter national income as I told. So I will just put the heading as chapter 1 national income. Now students, just to tell you, your question paper in the exam, your total question paper for economics will be for 52 marks, including options. And out of 52, you are supposed to attempt 40 marks. Now, divided into three parts, your paper will be divided into three parts. They will be asking you numerical sums. Second, questions based on theory that is completely theory based questions and third one or two questions may come like self explanatory where you are supposed to analyze you are supposed to write on your own. So basically three types of questions may come numerical sums, direct questions that is pure theory questions and wherever possible support your answer with diagram and third will be self explanatory type question. So let us start with the first chapter. Now in chapter number one, there are two units. So I am starting with the first unit, national income, determination of national income. Now students, please understand in very simple language, can I say national income is nothing but income of the nation? So I will write income of the nation is national income. See logic is very simple. My income is personal income. Your parents income is personal income. Uh, income earned by reliance, income earned by a particular company, firm or organization is private income. But when country earns money, nation gets income that becomes national income. So two things you need to understand here, income of the nation is national income, but can I say nation is made up of people? So we people will go out, we people will work, we people will earn and our income will be a part of national income. But more important, earned income should be recorded in national income. Which income? Earned income. That is rent, wages, interest, profit, commission, brokerage. All these are earned income. Salary, earned income. Moment a person receives this income, moment person earns this income, if it discloses this income, then this income will get recorded in national income. Any income which is unearned, any income which is unearned should be excluded from national income calculation. Like gift, grant, charity, donation, scholarship, dowry, pension, unemployment allowance, these all are unearned. Without you doing anything, you are getting that. Like on my birthday, my father gave me 5,000 rupees cash. 
Now that 5000 is a gift for me. I have not earned that money. So national income says, please ignore anything which is unearned because they are called as what transfer payments or transfer income. Such things will not be a part of national income. And in India, national income calculation is done by CSO, that is Central Statistical Organization, responsible for estimating, evaluating, calculating national income for us. So, this was one part, all earned income should be added, unearned income should be ignored. Second, I would like to say, any goods and services produced in our domestic territory. Repeat, repeat, repeat. Any goods and services which are produced in our domestic territory during a financial year, the value of those goods and services should get recorded in GDP, should get recorded in national income. So, to be very precise, I would like to write national income is a money value of all final goods and services, final goods and services produced in domestic territory, domestic economy during a financial year plus net factor income from abroad, plus net factor income from abroad. Now, students, this is the basic meaning, I would say definition of national income. Quickly, I will repeat, national income is a money value. Money value means every product or a service should have a price, monetary value. Of all final goods and services, product should be a final product. Like this pen is a final product, this calculator is a final product. Final products are those things which cannot be further processed. So, please raw material, intermediate goods, work in progress, all these things should be avoided, should be excluded because otherwise it will lead to double counting. Like a plank of wood, 2000 rupees is the value, converted into a furniture, furniture value is 5000. So, in national income or while doing GDP calculation, directly 5000 will be considered. 2000 plus 5000, wrong, double counting. Because ultimately that furniture is made out of the same plank of wood. So, 5000 includes the value of the plank of wood. So, please remember it should be only final goods and services, production should be done within our country that is domestic economy and in that particular year only that is from 1st April to 31st March plus net factor income from abroad. So, income coming from abroad like say example if I go to Dubai or Singapore to give a lecture on economics, are they going to pay me? Yes. Am I going to bring money back in India? Yes. So, money coming from abroad. A services are produced over there, but money is coming in our country. Receipts. If they come here, we are supposed to give them money, they will take money out of India. Capital flight will take place, payment. So, receipts minus payment. Repeat, receipts minus payment is nothing but NFIA, net factor income from abroad. So, this was a very basic meaning, understanding or I would say definition of national income. Now, one thought will come in your mind, sir, then what is GDP? You are explaining national income, then what is GDP? So, GDP, national income both are same, but they are not exactly same. GDP is a bit narrow concept, national income is a broader concept. GDP includes depreciation, national income, while calculating national income, you have to minus depreciation from GDP. So, national income is basically net, GDP is gross. So, GDP definition goes like this, 
GDP is a money value of all final goods and services produced in domestic territory during a financial year. Full stop. If I put a full stop, then it becomes gross domestic product. But students, moment I add NFIA, national income. Moment I remove NFIA, GDP. So, this was a very basic meaning about what is GDP, what is national income. So, please remember earned income like rent, wages, interest, profit, salary, all such things will be added. Unearned income you need to ignore and whatever goods and services produced in our domestic economy in that particular year and it should be a final product, it should also have a monetary value, then that product's value will get recorded in national income. Students, basically, there are three methods of calculating national income. We will be discussing that is product method, income method, and expenditure method. Fine, so this was a very uh, basic understanding. Let's go ahead, students. So, national income accounting is the name of your first unit. Like, let's go to the first question. Precautions while calculating national income. So, what all things you need to keep in your mind or what all things you need to be very, very careful while calculating national income. So, number one point says national income is a money value. That is the meaning or the definition which I have already explained you. So, this is already done students. All earned income should be a part of national income. Just now we discussed unearned income like gift, grant, charity, donation, pension should be excluded. Third says anything produced for self-consumption should be added. Anything produced for self-consumption should be added. Now students, if you can see there are around 12 points in this. Say example if the question comes for two marks, write five to six points. If question comes for three marks, I would request is that support, first of all, support your answer with a definition of national income, maybe two, three lines, and then start precautions while calculating national income, write seven points at least for three marks. So, around about 6 to 7 points looks good. So, I would consider write 7 points for 3 marks. So, for 2 marks, round about 5 points and for 3 marks, round about 7 points. Maximum, you can go till 8 points if it is for 3 marks. So, I will continue. Third point says anything produced for self-consumption should be added. Like, please understand whatever is produced, moment goods are produced, the value will get recorded if it is disclosed to the CSO. Like say example, farmer producing 500 kg of rice, 300 kg sold in the market, 200 kg consumed by his family, but how much he had produced? 500. Full 500 value will be recorded in national income because 500 kg rice was produced. So, say example, if I produce this pen, value of this pen is 1000 rupees, it is a digital pen and now after producing this pen, I am using this pen for my self purpose, for my self benefit, I am using this pen, irrespective value will get recorded. So, anything produced for self consumption, anything produced for self consumption should be added. Moving to the next, fourth point says any kind of financial investment like shares, bonds, debentures not to be included. Because say example, if I invest 1 lakh rupees in shares or if I buy government bonds worth 1 lakh rupees, can I say money is just shifting its place? Neither goods nor services are produced. So, any kind of financial investment, FD, shares, bonds not to be recorded because money is just shifting its place. Fifth says value of only final product should be taken. Please see to it raw material, intermediate goods, semi-finished goods to be 
excluded because as I told you it will lead to double counting. So a 2 meter piece of cloth converted into a shirt please directly take shirt value because value of cloth is already included in the value of shirt. Next any kind of second hand product or transaction where goods are produced in the previous year where goods are produced in the previous year should be excluded from national income. Now anything produced in the previous year like say example a brand new car was produced in 2000 say example 2020 value of that car 10 lakh rupees production was done in 2020. So in 2020 itself that 10 lakh rupees got recorded in national income got recorded in GDP. But now that same car, if you are selling in the current year, that is 2021, nothing will come in national income calculation because that is the old car produced in the previous year. Every time calculation is done in the previous year, nothing will come in the current year. So please remember anything produced in the previous year old two wheeler, old four wheeler, old house, old machinery, old furniture, but it should be produced in the previous year, then that calculation or any such calculation will not be a part of current year. Seven point says income earned by foreign companies in India. So there are so many foreign companies doing business in India. You have McDonald's, you have Adidas, you have Reebok, you have Volkswagen. Samsung, Hitachi, mobile companies, so many mobile companies, there are many foreign companies doing business in India. So please remember whatever goods they will produce in our domestic territory, value of those goods will be recorded. But whatever profits they earn, that will be recorded in their home country because they maintain books in their home country, irrespective whether they take profits back or not. Profits won't be recorded here. Only value of goods will be produced and that will be recorded. Any windfall gain or losses should be excluded. Like I invested 1 lakh rupees in stock market, after 5 days 1 lakh becomes 3 lakhs. There was a huge jump in the market. All my shares performed and there was a windfall gain to me. Windfall means sudden unexpected gain or it could be unexpected loss but any kind of windfall gain or losses not to be a part of national income because here also neither goods nor services are produced any trophy medal a person uh, answering questions in kbc winning 50 lakhs these all are gain not to be added in national income Lottery money will not come. Then any kind of illegal income where money is earned through smuggling, hawala transactions, black marketing, all wrong activities. So by doing or by performing wrong activities, money is earned. Any which ways, law is not going to permit. Any which ways, person cannot disclose such income and such income, even though goods are produced, even though services are produced, since it is illegal, won't be a part of GDP, won't be a part of national income. Rent, wages, interest, profit, dividend, mixed income, commission, brokerage, you can add because they are earned income, they are factor income, added. All exports and receipts are added, that is to be very precise X minus M. All exports are added and all imports are deducted. M stands for imports. And all receipts are added and all payments are deducted. So add all receipts, add all exports, minus all imports, minus all payments. So X minus M plus R minus P. Please remember. And last is depreciation to be deducted and indirect tax to be deducted. Subsidies will be added. So, why subsidies will be added, when it will be added, when indirect tax will be deducted, slowly, slowly we will discuss. 
So, please understand as I was telling you GDP includes depreciation, but if you want to calculate national income from GDP that is gross minus depre, you get net and national income is nothing but net calculation. So, students this was your precautions, write round about 5 points for 2 marks, round about 7 to 8 points for 3 marks. So, moving ahead, next is national income and explain the usefulness of national income. This question looks important, may come for 3 marks, may come for 3 marks. So, as I told you support your answer with a meaning or a definition they have already given your students it's a net value of all economic goods and services so till year it is a meaning or a definition you can say for three marks support your answer with that so first point says national income estimate provides a comprehensive conceptual and accounting framework for analyzing and evaluating the short term performance of the economy students basically national income data national income or GDP data is a report card for our country's performance. Like if I tell you how much marks did you score in your 10th standard or 12th standard, so you people will tell me, sir I scored 85 percent, 90 percent, whatever. That is your performance, that is your report card. Similarly, if country's GDP rises, country's national income rises, more goods and services are produced. Can I say in that particular year, country's performance will be good? So, basically, national income statistics, national income data helps us in analyzing the short run performance of the country compared to other countries where India stands, how we are performing, what better we can do. Second point, the distribution pattern of national income determines the pattern of demand for goods and services and helps business to forecast future demand for its products. Like if national income is more, if GDP is more, can I say more goods and services are produced in the economy, then only national income rises. A higher national income means people's income has increased, people have started earning more government is started getting more tax now. So, today people are buying goods and services. Can I say keeping in mind the current situation, all business firms, organization, they will try to forecast what is going to happen in next six months or maybe next one year. So, it gives you the current situation that is demand for goods and services and also helps in forecasting that is anticipating future demand for companies, goods or services. Next, economic welfare depends to the considerable degree on the magnitude and the distribution of national income, size of per capita income and growth of these over times. Now, if country's population is under control and national income rises, then I would say per capita income will also rise. Students today, roughly if I tell India's per capita income is dollar $2,000 roughly. The problem with our country is national income may increase by 2 percent, but population may increase by 2.5 percent. So, if the growth of population is more than growth of GDP or national income, per capita income will look on a lower side, it will fall. So, higher national income, higher per capita income, higher standard of living possible. And developed countries like France, UK, Germany, Japan, US, they are the best examples. So, country having higher national income, standard of living is always high, higher per capita income. Next, it shows the composition and structure of national income in terms of different sectors of the economy, periodical variation in them, broad sectoral shift in the economy. Using this information, government can fix sector specific development targets and accordingly development plans and policies will be made. Like in India, there are three sectors, primary sector, secondary sector and tertiary sector. So, whatever final goods and services are produced in all three sectors, if you add, you get national income GDP. Now, which sector is performing a bit bad? So, I would say agriculture. 
a students from last one one and a half year agriculture is doing fantastic manufacturing and service sector they are not doing good because of the pandemic but overall i would say service sector is the highest contributor to gdp second best is manufacturing unfortunately agriculture sector looks little weak 12 to 13 percent gdp contribution 15 to 16 percent is for manufacturing round about 50 to 55 percent comes from service sector so your government will first calculate which sector is doing good which sector is doing average which sector is doing bad accordingly certain development targets plans policies will be made so now more focus will be given to rural areas more focus will be given to agriculture because today also 65 percent of our population resides in rural areas so that is nothing but sector wise development targets can be set can be fixed next national income statistics also helps in assessing and selecting economic policies for objective statement as well as evaluation of government economic policy now student highlight one word that is economic policy now economic policy is of two types one is fiscal policy one is monetary policy whenever government decides anything regarding taxation and public expenditure when to increase tax when to reduce tax when to increase public expenditure when to reduce public expenditure that is fiscal policy and whenever reserve bank of india that is central bank of our country talks about increasing the interest rates reducing the interest rates all such discussions comes under monetary policy now can i say keeping in mind the current situation if national income is doing fantastic if gdp is rising too much if national income is increasing too much there is a high probability inflation may increase because growth and inflation inflation growth they have direct relation so tax may increase interest rates may go up and if growth is contracting national income is going down gdp is falling crisis going on in the economy interest rates may fall loan may become cheap taxes may fall people may have more money in their hands depends on the situation so national income data helps government helps central bank in deciding proper monetary and fiscal policies that is nothing but economic policy moving ahead the national income data are also useful to determine share of nations contribution to various international body like students india is a member with IMF, World Bank and WTO. So there are three big international bodies and India is bound to contribute to their fund, to IMF fund, to World Bank fund and contribution is purely dependent on how much is the country's national income. On the basis of country's national income, contributions will be made to respective international body. Like today, United States of America is the world's superpower. So his contribution will be more to IMF and World Bank compared to India. India is the seventh largest country in the world. So our contribution will be accordingly. So can I say more GDP, more national income, higher will be our contribution. And if we contribute more and whenever we will require loans, whenever we will require funds, whenever we will require grants, we, will, we can get more money during that time and that determines our loan eligibility that determines country's quality life standard of living combined with financial and monetary data national income data provides a guide to make policies for growth and inflation so national income helps in understanding okay, what is the percentage growth what is the in which direction inflation is going when to control how much to control that helps us in deciding that and last national income estimate helps in economic forecasting and to make projections about future development trends like government can i say government will always take care of present and will plan for future can i say future is electric future will be completely technology driven so today government companies institutes organizations large corporations they all are planning for future 
so today if economy is growing by 2% or 3% or maybe 5% in coming few years our growth should be exponential our growth should be very large so that planning is done from today itself so students these were usefulness in calculating or estimating national income five points two marks seven roughly seven points will be good for three marks so students two questions quickly we have done we are done with precautions and we are done with usefulness moving ahead students now concepts of national income like few general formulas i will explain you that is gdp market price now students just to tell you national income and gdp can be calculated with the help of market price also it is calculated with the help of factor cost also market price includes indirect tax excludes subsidy but if you want factor cost you have to remove indirect tax you have to add subsidy so you please remember national income calculation is always done as per factor cost it is not done as per market price but just for your knowledge purpose from 2015 onwards our government calculates national income and gdp as per market price not as per factor cost that is just for your information but from a syllabus point of view you give more importance to fc rather than mp so last time i will repeat market price is nothing but the mrp it includes indirect tax excludes subsidy but if you want to go to factor cost so from market price you remove indirect tax you add subsidy you get factor cost one thought will come sir why we have to remove indirect tax because indirect tax is an unearned income we people buy goods government earns money we people buy goods government earns money tax indirect tax is an unearned income and unearned income has no place in gdp or national income so what is the basic formula for gdp market price it is consumption plus investment plus government plus x minus m that is c plus i plus g plus x minus m so any expenditure or anything households are consuming clothes shoes mobile car accessories mask food items book pen specs wallet consumption goods i is investment goods machines tools equipments which businessman produces g is government government also produces many goods and services infrastructure that comes under g and x minus m is nothing but all exports are added imports are deducted so this is a base formula c plus i plus g plus x minus m now if i want to convert this into factor cost what did i say remove it add subsidy so c plus i plus g plus x minus m minus it plus s it stands for indirect tax now why subsidies are added because if i produce a vaccine say example if i produce a vaccine for 100 rupees this includes my rent my wages my interest and profit but sometimes on certain essential items government will tell me that don't sell this vaccine for 100 sell this vaccine for 80 but if i sell for 80 can i say i will incur loss so government is like don't worry 20 rupees i will give you as a grant i will give you as a subsidy so can i say my earned income is coming back to me in a form of a subsidy 20 rupees is my earned income coming back to me who is giving me government is giving me in a form of a subsidy that's why this subsidy is added so this was about your gdp factor cost next is gnp market price now middle letter has changed domestic has become national d has become n so whenever the middle letter is n that is national r minus p that is nfia will come but nfia r minus p that is will nfia and r minus p both are same so r minus p will come only when the middle letter is n middle alphabet is n so i will write c plus i plus g plus x minus m 
plus r minus p. So, this is your g n p market price. So, x minus m plus r minus p, but r minus p will come only when the middle letter is n, n means national. But now, we need to convert this into factor cost, then it will be c plus i plus g plus x minus m plus r minus p minus i t plus s. So, you remove indirect tax, you add subsidy, you get factor cost. Very simple, this was about g n p factor cost calculation. Now, moving ahead, n d p market price, that is net domestic product. First letter is net now. Net means you have to minus depreciation from GNP. So, from GDP you will minus depreciation. Middle letter is again D. D means domestic. It means R minus P will not have any place. R minus P will not come now. So, formula goes like this C plus I plus G plus X minus M minus D. D stands for depreciation. Why depreciation? Because the first letter is N. N stands for net. Now, we need to convert this into factor cost. Now, you all know it is C plus I plus G plus X minus M minus I T plus S minus D. So, please remember R minus P will come only when the middle alphabet is N minus depreciation you will do only when the first alphabet is n, n means net. So, n d p n stands for net and g n p that middle n stands for national. Next is n n p market price. Now, you have to tell me first letter is n that is net, second letter is also n means national P remains product, so net national product at market price. So, your R minus P will also come and in the last you will do minus depreciation also. So, C plus I plus G plus X minus M plus R minus P minus depreciation. But this was market price. Now, if we want to calculate Factor cost, very simple, C plus I plus G plus X minus M plus R minus P minus I T plus S minus D. So, students, this was a very basic formulas. Please, you need to understand, learn, by heart, do whatever you want because without this, you will not be able to solve numerical sums based on national income or GDP. So, these were four concepts which I discussed, GDP gross domestic product, GNP gross national product, net domestic product and fourth was net national product. So, first MP then FC, MP then FC. Now, students just now we completed formulas for national income that was GDP, GNP, NDP and NNP, C plus I plus G, X minus M, R minus P, minus IT plus S, all those things we have done. Now, let us understand few more formulas connected to it. Now, which is given in the notes, pay attention. If you can see on screen, GDP MP, that is gross domestic product market price, value of output in domestic territory minus value of intermediate consumption. So, point is that only final product value you will take and from that you will remove raw material, intermediate goods, semi-finished goods value, intermediate consumption is not to be considered because it is already included in the final value of the commodity. Otherwise, it will lead to double counting. So, formula goes value of output minus value of intermediate consumption. Then GNP MP from GDP, if you add NFIA, so GDP plus NFIA you get GNP. So, students please remember three things. First, alphabet changes like G becomes N minus depreciation, second letter, second alphabet changes that is domestic, D becomes N, add NFIA and when you are going from MP to FC, minus I D plus S. Please remember three things. Next is GDP MP. So, now if you want GDP MP, so can I say from GNP MP, you will remove NFIA. 
so GNP MP minus NFIA so just to inform you again NFIA is nothing but R minus P it is nothing but what R minus P in order to calculate national what you will do domestic plus net factor income from abroad domestic plus NFIA NDP MP GDP you have GDP MP and now you want NDP MP so gross becomes net only when you minus depreciation so GDP MP minus depreciation will give you NDP MP again if you want NDP MP and this time you have NNP MP with you so what you will do minus NFIA so D will become N this D will become N gross very simple net plus depreciation you get gross and gross minus depreciation you get net NNP MP GNP MP minus depreciation you get NNP MP one more formula if NDP is given again you will add NFIA you get NNP and suppose NNP MP you are supposed to find and GDP MP is given so what you will do you add NFIA and you minus depreciation so GDP MP plus net factor income from abroad minus depreciation you get NNP MP market price is nothing but factor cost plus net indirect tax students net indirect tax is nothing but minus IT plus S calculation please and if you want factor cost what you will do you will add indirect tax and you will minus subsidy so that is two formulas for calculating market price so this is nothing but this now factor cost from MP from market price what you will do you will minus indirect tax here it was plus and that is nothing but minus IT plus S now students these are two formulas GDP at factor cost NDP at factor cost this is related to income method which method income method so I had already told you there are three methods for calculating national income product method income method and expenditure method now let us look at the income method formula first is GDP MP minus indirect tax plus subsidy that's fine so moment you do minus IT plus S you get what factor cost now another formula is compensation of employees they will give you in the question compensation of employees is nothing but wages plus salary students please remember here compensation of employees includes both income or wages in a form of cash or wages in a form of kind both plus operating surplus that is your rent interest and profit plus mixed income by self-employed mixed income is that income which cannot be distinguished a freelancer or a self-employed person is earning income from many sources plus depreciation so compensation of employees plus operating surplus plus mixed income plus depreciation but now please make a note I want everyone should write this now students you will add depreciation only when you are jumping from national income to GDP you will add a depreciation only when you are going from national income to GDP like say example you already have national income figure with you say example national income 6000 and now you are supposed to calculate what GDP so already NNP FC you have already NNP FC amount is given and you have to go to GDP then only you will add depreciation please make a note this is NDP FC net domestic product factor cost so everything will be same compensation of employees operating surplus mixed income of self-employed depreciation will not come so students please understand in income method while calculating national income 
depreciation should be avoided because in income we do not calculate depreciation and in income method by default it is already factor cost. So, minus i t plus s minus i t plus s has no role. So, depreciation indirect tax subsidy will not play any role in income method they will come into the picture only when you have been told to calculate market price that will come in the picture only when you have been told to calculate market price that time only you will touch otherwise no. So, please remember these two formulas the one which I have put a star mark they are very important based on income method. Okay. So, now in the exam they may ask explain the term GDP. So, you need to write 4 to 5 points students. So, it is a measure market value of all final economic goods and services gross of depreciation produced in domestic territory all current production is taken into consideration. So, till here you can write please mention no need to write word to word you can put it in your own words and please support your answer irrespective whether it is 2 marks or 3 marks wherever possible please write the formula when it comes to GDP, NDP, NNP whatever. This also you can add GDP can be estimated either through market price or through factor cost. At market price we include all indirect tax and we exclude all subsidy. While on the other hand in factor cost what we do reverse. We remove indirect tax and we add subsidy. So, this much you can write I have given you the bit marking or understanding that how much you can cover for 2 marks. So, these 2 paragraphs looks reasonable. So, you can make a note of this ok students. So, students these were basically formulas for GDP or national income calculation. So, we started with GDP MP and we stop at NNP FC. So, just for your knowledge purpose please make a note your NNP FC your NNPFC is nothing but your national income is nothing but your national income NNPFC. So, moment they tell you to calculate national income they are telling you to calculate NNPFC. Now, students let us understand quickly what is personal income there can be one question based on personal income it can be a numerical sum or maybe a theory. So, you can see here what is personal income now students national income was income earned by all factors of production that was rent was added wages were added interest was added profit was added mixed income was added but students personal income includes both earned income as well as unearned income. So, whatever income individual earns, whatever income household earns, whatever income non-profit institute serving household earns, it could be an NGO. So, that income becomes personal income. So, here we are not supposed to think whether the income is earned, whether income is earned or not. If the money has received in your hand or money has credited in your account, moment you receive that money irrespective of any source that money will be recorded in personal income calculation. So, what they say while national income is income earned by factors of production personal income is income received by household including non-profit institutions serving household thus national income is a measure of income earned and personal income is a measure of actual current income receipts of the person from all the sources even students gift charity, donation, grant, pension, dowry everything will come here, but it should be received money should be there in your hand or money is coming in your account. So, which may not be earned from productive sources in other words it is a income actually paid out to household money actually given to household 
but not necessarily earned. So even though it is unearned, please add. Even though it is unearned, please add. So basically, it is a combination of both earned as well as unearned. So social security benefits, unemployment compensation, welfare payment. All transfer payments are added, please. But transfer payments will be ignored when we calculate national income. Please make a note. Undistributed corporate profit. This will not come because it is declared. Profit is declared. Dividend is declared, but not yet distributed. It has not come in my hand. So you will not record in personal income. Employers contribution to social security like like my organization my company is giving me mediclaim facility life insurance facility other benefits to me benefits will come in future not now. So you will not add in personal income. Please remember you will include only those items which you have received. So I would request you to mark this much this looks reasonable enough for two marks and you need to support your answer with the help of a formula so i will help you with the formula pay attention so one is the detail formula second is the shortcut so first is personal income is equals to national income so students please understand personal income includes national income but not full national income only few items of national income like rent wages interest profit mixed income nfia In case if there is commission brokerage, you can add that. So only these items, rent, wages, interest, profit, mixed income, NFIA, you can even write dividend. Now these items will be a part of national income also because they are earned income and these items will also be recorded in personal income. So students national income is a broader concept and from national income from national income we will remove certain things and we will add certain things in order to get personal income. I will again repeat this is national income and from national income I will remove certain items and I will add certain items and then I will derive personal income. So what all things we are supposed to remove from national income? which all things won't be a part of personal income. So first I will write less undistributed corporate profits. Students it means company has earned profit, company has declared profit, company has declared dividend also that he is going to give it to the shareholders but it is not yet distributed. Nothing has come in my hand. It is yet to come. It is yet to come. So once it will come, that time you add as if no because the word is undistributed. So this will be less. Second, corporate Profit tax or you can even write corporate tax. So who pays corporate tax to whom? Can I say companies? Companies like Reliance, companies like Aditya Birla, companies like ITC, companies like Bajaj Auto, they will pay corporate tax to the government. But students, can I say corporate tax companies are paying to the government. Individual income, personal income has no role in that. Remove because corporate profit tax is included in national income but that won't be a part of personal income so we will minus third social security contribution so this is a contribution made by employer towards its employees just now i told that mediclaim life insurance gratuity pension 
provident fund allocation, all those things which employer is giving benefit to the employee in the form of kind, benefit to the employee in the form of kind. But students, those benefits may occur in future. Those benefits we will enjoy in future. Today you are not getting in anything in hand, so you will minus. So these three things you will remove from national income and my dear students what you will add? You will add transfer payments or transfer income. So charity, donation, gift, dowry, pension, unemployment allowances, all those things, all those transfer payments will be added. So please remember these three things you will remove from national income and transfer payment you will add in national income and whatever will be left will be your personal income. So please see to it this is the complete formula for personal income and just one thing I would like to add here retained earnings one question may come on retained earnings so just remember the formula it is corporate profit minus dividend and retained earnings is nothing but undistributed corporate profits so say example if they have given in the some particular question corporate profits 1000 dividend given is 200 can I say 800 is still retained with the company? Retained represents not yet distributed. So 800 you will minus in order to derive at personal income. 800 is not a part of personal income because it is not yet distributed. 200 is distributed. So any which ways we have added dividend here if you can see. So just remember they can use this language retained earnings. That is nothing but undistributed corporate profit. So this was your personal income formula and a shortcut formula, same formula, but I can put it in this way. Personal income is equals to national income plus income received but not earned this is nothing but your transfer payments minus income earned but not received this is nothing but your corporate profit tax employer employer social security contribution undistributed corporate profit all three this all three are earned incomes but not received so minus transfer payment is unearned income but received add so this is what you are supposed to study in personal income okay students so this is what see already the formula and everything is given in the notes kindly follow this notes students now Connected to this, there is a topic called as personal disposable income. Very simple. So, personal income minus personal income tax. So, students from personal income, if I minus personal income tax, whatever will be left will be personal disposable income. Everything will be given in the question. Now, say example, there is one person, Mr. A. There is one person, Mr. A, who is earning 1 lakh rupees a month, paying 10,000 rupees personal tax to the government. Just an example. So, he is left with 90,000. 90,000 is at its disposal. 90,000 becomes personal disposable income. Income left after paying income left after paying personal tax so we are done with this please ensure you write all four to five lines now let's move to the next topic which is newly added in your 
inter sea economics syllabus that is calculation of private income. So, we know how to calculate GDP, we know the formulas, we know how to calculate national income. Just now we saw personal income and personal disposable income. Now, quickly we will see what is private income. Now, students income coming to an individual or an household was personal income, income to the nation is national income, but companies, firm, organization, institute, large corporations, they are earning money, then it becomes private income. So, your private income also, whether the income is earned or whether income is unearned, whether income is a form of a transfer payment or whether income is in a form of a factor income that is rent, wages, interest, profit that will be added, will be recorded in private income. If whether the income is coming within domestic territory or whether income is coming from abroad, it will get added. So, a very simple formula for private income, I will write factor income from net domestic product factor income from net domestic product plus net factor income from abroad now what is this factor income from net domestic product means whatever income earned whatever income earned by a company within domestic territory within India that is net factor that is factor income from net domestic product and NFIA you people already know say example my, my company has branches in Dubai, US, Singapore, Hong Kong so money is coming from there NFIA income earned from abroad plus national debt interest now, what is this national debt interest my company had invested some money in government bonds my company had invested some money in government securities now government is giving me interest on it i am receiving interest on government debt so can i say government is using my company's funds Com government is using my company's money and on that i am receiving interest that is national debt interest. So, we had invested money in government securities, maybe bonds, government is giving interest on it. So, interest received on national debt is added plus current transfer from government. Like India, India's government has given me a subsidy or maybe an export incentive or maybe a grant to run my business. So, company receives subsidy, maybe an incentive, maybe a grant, maybe a aid, maybe a help that is within country, internal government transfers added and last is, last point says other net transfers from rest of the world. Subsidy may be coming from abroad, from any other company. So, subsidy incentives grant coming from abroad, transfer happening from abroad, maybe from other countries government, maybe some other bank or maybe any other institute ready to bail out or help my company. So, this was within country, this is coming from abroad and your this total becomes your private income formula. So, it goes factor income from net domestic product that is within country plus NFIA now income is earned from abroad plus government transfers within country plus national debt interest we have invested money in government bonds government is giving us interest that is company has invested and last net transfers from rest of the world, money, subsidy, incentives, grant, aid coming from abroad in my business. 
So, please remember private income includes both earned as well as unearned, both factor income as well as transfers. So, this was newly added in your syllabus, please make a note, this was about private income. Now, students one question may come, what is the difference between market price and factor cost? So, it is already given here, you just need to see factor cost is called because it represents total cost of all factors that is labor, capital, entrepreneurship. But in factor cost, indirect taxes have no place, subsidies are added. So, in addition to factor cost, market value of goods and services will include indirect tax. In MP, indirect taxes are included, not in FC. So, product taxes and taxes on production, like sales tax, VAT, GST, custom duty, excess duty, these all are product taxes. Whereas, you pay pollution tax, you pay some extra license fee for production to the local authorities, these all are production taxes, that is taxes on production. So, these all are in direct tax which will be included in market price but not in factor cost. Government gives subsidy to many goods and services, market price will be lower the amount of subsidy on products and goods and services. Can I say if government gives subsidy to a particular business, his cost will reduce? If I am producing a commodity for 100 rupees and government gives me 30 rupees subsidy, now my cost is 70. That is what they are trying to say. Hence, the market value of final expenditure would exceed the total obtained factor cost by the amount of the product and the production taxes reduced by the similar kind of subsidies. So, your example is given. If possible, support your answer with an example. So, this was a very simple two marks question. What is market price? What is factor cost? Now, students moving ahead, there is a concept called as nominal GDP and second is real GDP. What is nominal GDP? What is real GDP? Please understand GDP, national income, both are calculated in two ways. One is nominal, one is real. So, when GDP is calculated on the basis of change in price, when GDP is calculated on the basis of change in price, then it is nominal GDP. Now, while calculating nominal GDP, current prices are taken into consideration, current prices. Now, students can I say because of change in price, countries GDP may either rise or it may fall. Like say example, India's current GDP, India's current GDP is around 180 lakh crore. Just an example, India's current GDP or national income is around 180 lakh crore. Now, this calculator is produced in India. If this calculator is produced in India and the price of this calculator increases because of inflation, can I say the value will also increase in the national income? So, a 100 rupee product now available for 120 rupees, so national income will go up by 20 rupees. Likewise, if inflation comes, price of goods and services will increase, national income will look on a higher side. Deflation, price of goods and services will fall, national income will fall. Is this giving you a true picture? Is this giving you a correct information about country's GDP or growth? No. So, this gives you which information? False growth. Because price may change every day, price may change every week, price may change every month, every year. So, please remember nominal GDP calculation is done on the basis of change in price. Your output is not taken into consideration. Quantity produced is not taken into consideration. Price is taken into consideration because of change in price. If GDP changes, then it is nominal. But what is real? Here they will say change in output. So, because of change in output, if GDP rises or if GDP falls, then I would say it is real GDP. Real represents quantity output of goods and services. Here 
constant price are taken that is 2011-12 is considered as a base year for calculating so here what they will do they will take the prices which were going on or which were going during 2011 and 12 those prices will be taken and in a particular year how much quantity goods and services are produced how much quantity goods and services are added and those goods and services will be multiplied with the price of the base year that is 2011 and 12 so price will be constant price will remain constant output will be taken into consideration so can i say because of change in output if national income increases that will give you the true information true growth true health of the economy true growth so this is your nominal gdp real gdp just a small example to help you say example pen is produced output produced is 1 lakh quantity price per pen is 2 rupees then the value will be 2 lakh now case 1 and case 2 if i tell you this is case 1 case 2 say example output remains 1 lakh price is 4 rupees now what is the value 4 lakh second case please see to it output has become 2 lakh my dear students price remains 2 rupees what is the value value is 4 lakh now students can i say in first case in first case in first case 4 lakh is because of change in price nominal gdp and in second case 4 lakh is because of change in output real gdp so because of change in price when national income or gdp changes nominal and because of change in output if gdp changes real so please remember real gdp is inflation adjusted gdp i will again repeat real gdp is nothing but inflation adjusted gdp because your price component price factor is not taken into consideration we are considering base year price constant price that is 2011 12 our country considers so this was your about real gdp nominal gdp very important students if you observe here see distinguish between gdp at current and constant price current is your nominal and constant price is your real so precise answer is given so i would request you to study the full full all the points and please write every answer in points by default even if you find few questions in a paragraph form in this notes i request each one of you to write everything in points so round about five points maximum six points for two marks sounds good seven to eight points maximum for three marks sounds good support your answer with diagram wherever possible formula wherever possible put formula in a box presentation will play a very important role and more important you should focus on the question number because from question 7 till question 11 will be your economics part so from 1 to 6 1 to 6 will be your fm and from 7th question onwards till 11 question will be economics around about 20 questions they will give you in the paper which will be total of 52 marks including options and you have to attempt 40 marks paper so students this was about uh, gdp constant see here also you can have a look they have explained we have explained nominal gdp as i told you 2011-12 is taken as a base year so on the basis of current price and this is on the basis of some base year that is constant price 
So, even this you can study and go. So, if they ask distinguish already given, explain nominal real GDP that is also given even the my explanation includes that table and the example. So, students this was about nominal and real GDP or they can even ask nominal national income, real national income everything will remain same. Now, students another topic a very small topic may come for two marks that is per capita income. So, what is this per capita income in a very simple language it is an average income of all the Indians. So, total national income divided by total population repeat repeat total national income divided by total population. So, national income divided by total population of our country you get average income of each and every individual in the country irrespective whether that person is earning or not. So, very simple formula national income divided by total population and just for your knowledge purpose India's per capita income is around or I would say approximate dollar 2000. It is around or approximate dollar 2000 is India's per capita income. So, I will just read it for you two marks question GDP per capita is a measure of country's economic output per person. It is combined by obtained by dividing countries gross domestic product adjusted by inflation that is they will take real GDP by the total population it serves as an indicator of standard of living of the country. So, countries like uh, US, UK, even country like China, European countries, Japan they have a very good per capita income. Unfortunately, India is not doing good when it comes to per capita income and the unfortunate story recently I came to know was even the country like Bangladesh is going little ahead than India when it comes to per capita income. So, their per capita income is bit higher than India's per capita income, but I am completely sure that we will overtake them very soon. So, it is a very simple concept only 3 to 4 lines you have to write. So, it is national income upon total population or India's GDP that is real GDP upon total population you get per capita income basically measures country's quality life measures country's standard of living. So, students if population increases, but if national income increases greater than the increase in population then per capita income will rise. What I told population rises, but national income rises even more than increase in the population then only per capita income will rise. But the problem in our country is that national income increases by 2 percent population sometimes increases by 4 percent. So, rise in population is faster than rise in the growth or rise in the national income that is why the per capita income looks on a lower side a very simple concept. Now, students going ahead just to tell you since we have already done this concepts. So, I would request each one of you to thoroughly read learn all these concepts and go. What we had done was formula C plus I plus G plus X minus M market price factor cost R minus P depreciation they, those were formulas. But for two marks they may tell you to explain NDP market price, NNP factor cost, GDP factor cost anything they can ask. So, this is your GDP market price explanation, this is GDP factor cost explanation two to three lines you can write in your own words no problem. Gross national product see it is a measure of market value of all final economic goods gross of depreciation that means it includes depreciation produced within the domestic territory of the country by normal residents normal residents means within the country accounting year including net factor income from abroad because it is G N P N means R minus P likewise we have given for NDP MP NDP C to it it will be less depreciation and last year we have given NNP MP here it will be two things NFIA will come depreciation will also come 
and if they ask an NPFC, same definition, same explanation, in the end what you will do? Minus indirect tax and add subsidies, you get factor cost. Everything will be same. If they ask NNPFC, and NNPFC is nothing but national income. Now, let us quickly do a recap. What is GDP deflator? So, my dear students, this is newly added in the syllabus by, in, by the institute. So, the topic is what is GDP deflator? Now, students, basically GDP deflator is a measure of price level that is basically calculates inflation. Inflation or, or the level of price which has taken place between base year and the current year. So, 2021 is the current year and I will consider 2011 and 12 as a base year, which we I have already discussed previously. Now, deflator, the word deflator means to deflate or to remove inflation out of GDP. Repeat, repeat, repeat. Deflation means to deflate or to remove inflation out of GDP. So, basically, it will help you to convert nominal GDP into real GDP. G GDP deflator will help you to convert nominal GDP into real GDP. So, from 2011-12 till the current year, what is the amount of or what is the proportion of price included in gross domestic product, that price component if you want to remove, then GDP deflator will help you. So, basically it calculates or it deflates what? Inflation from gross domestic product. So, you can see here, there are 5 points and 6 will be the formula for 2 marks. They can ask this right as it is. Very simple, very easy. Basically, it measures what? General price inflation. Takes into consideration both nominal GDP as well, real GDP. Now, you know nominal GDP is calculated on the basis of price. Real is on the basis of output. So, from nominal if I remove the price factor, price component, inflation it becomes real GDP. The word GDP deflator or deflator means to deflate or to take inflation out of GDP. It is a price index used to convert nominal into real. So, in very simple language, please understand, it helps you to calculate change in the level of price which has taken place between base year and the current, base year and the current year. That is what is written here and I request you all to learn and by heart the formula, either a theory question or one, two marks numerical sum they may ask, they would say calculate GDP deflator. Now, students GDP deflator is also known as price index. Another name for GDP deflator is what? Price index. So, either they will tell calculate price index or they will tell calculate GDP deflator, both are one and the same. So, below you can see a very simple question, real GDP is given, nominal GDP is given, nominal GDP upon real GDP into 100, just substitute the numbers, you get the answer. And just to tell you, if answer is below 100, 75, 72, 68, 61, then prices have fallen. If it is above 100, prices have risen. See here the answer was 63.83. So, we have mentioned prices have fallen. So, in this question, it was straightforward question. Calculate GDP deflator was the question. In next example, you can find GDP deflator price index 2010-18 everything is given and just for your calculation for 2018, we have calculated deflator is given, nominal GDP is given, we are supposed to find real GDP. Very simple, basic mathematics, just substitute, multiply, divide, you get the answer. So, 1090.90 is your real GDP. Now, there could be one more question that is, calculate inflation rate, calculate inflation rate and this answer will be in percentage. So, no theory question, one numerical sum, formula is GDP deflator of the previous, that is GDP deflator of the previous year. So, 
formula is GDP deflator of the current year minus GDP deflator of the previous year upon GDP deflator of the previous year. So, if I tell you to calculate for 2019 then this becomes current year then previous year that is 2018 becomes the previous year upon previous year into 100. So, please learn the formula calculate inflation rate for the current year. So, formula goes GDP deflator current year minus GDP deflator previous year upon GDP deflator previous year into 100. Again numbers will be given. So, here you can see for 2019 113.63 for 2018 100 upon 100 you get the answer. So, 13.63 was the inflation rate. Likewise, this is calculated for 2020 14.62 is the inflation rate. So, students please see to it this basic simple plain vanilla flavor numerical sums you are supposed to do only thing is learn by heart mug up the formulas that is very very important. If you are thorough with the formula then you can solve any sum. So, this was a very small concept called as GDP deflator. Now, let us go ahead. Quickly, we will discuss total three types of methods for calculating national income. One is product method also known as final goods approach also known as value added method. Now, answer precise answer is given here. So, product method, output method, inventory method, industry origin method, value added method, final goods method all means one and the same. Now, students in this method value of final product that is the output coming out of the factory, output coming out of the industry, the final product value is taken into consideration. Now, this is also known as industry origin method. The word itself says something is originated from the industry. What is that something? Final product. Raw material, intermediate goods, work in progress should be ignored. Otherwise, it will lead to double counting. You people already know. In this, national income is calculated from output side, but only final output. So, whatever final goods which are been produced in primary sector, produced in secondary sector and produced in tertiary sector, take all three into consideration, add all three and in true sense, you will get national income data, GDP data through product method. So, students, this complete information you are supposed to write in the exam. Again, this becomes very important difference between value of material output and input at each stage of production is nothing but value added. So, basically it is nothing but output minus input because can I say output by default includes the input calculation. So, you need not take it separately. Now, the language to be used is GVA. So, students just for your understanding, there are two formulas number one and second is number two. GVA market price. Now, what is this GVA? Gross value added. Moment you see this word GVA, you will come to know that national income or GDP is calculated using which method? Product method. So, gross value added is nothing but gross domestic product. But why we use GVA? Just to tell or just to show that which method is being used while calculating GDP? Product method is used because gross value added. So, first formula is value of output minus value of intermediate consumption. Very simple formula. Same formula we had done for GDP also in the previous videos. Second formula, sales plus change in stock. Sales plus change in stock. Now, what is the formula for change in stock? Closing stock minus opening stock. So, in the question, closing stock will be given, opening stock will be given, closing minus opening, you get change in stock. Now, if you observe carefully, sales plus change in stock is nothing but value of output. 
I will again repeat sales plus change in stock is nothing but value of output because students movement output is produced can I say something will be sold in the market and something will be and out of that something will be kept in the warehouse or a go down as a stock that is nothing but a value of output. So sales plus change in stock is nothing but value of output minus intermediate consumption this remains same. So how to identify which formula when to be used so in a numerical sum sales figures will be given opening stock figure will be given closing stock will be given intermediate consumption will be given you will easily make out second formula to be used only value of output is given and only value of intermediate consumption is given first formula minus you get the answer see how it will go gross value added in primary sector secondary sector tertiary sector moment you add in true sense you get gdp mp plus nfia you get gnp mp minus depreciation you get nnp mp and now minus it plus s you get what national income this table represents value added output minus input output minus input output minus input will give you value added method so this was your product method now let's come to income method now students in our country in country like india product method is widely used extensively used because we are more into production of primary goods even service providers manufacturing to some extent, to a very few extent or to a very some extent, income method can be used in our country, but at a very minimal extent, majorly it is dominated by product method. Developed countries, UK, US, France, Germany, income method is widely used. In this method, national income is calculated from distribution side. So the total income, total earned income, that is rent, wages, interest, profit, NFIA, dividend, commission, brokerage, mixed income, all this earned income will be added. And after that, whatever you get becomes your national income or GDP, I would say it is national income using income method, but unearned income will be ignored gift, charity, donation, scholarship, dowry, pension, ignored because only earned income is taken into consideration. One more thing, in case numerical sums comes for income method, calculating national income, please remember it is already net, you need not minus depreciation because income from income we never minus depreciation, it is always on the assets and income method, it is already factor cost please ignore indirect tax, please ignore subsidy in income method. I want you people to make a note of this. So precise answer is given production is carried out by efforts of all factors of production that is land, labor, capital and entrepreneur. They also render service, they also get reward for it. So it is also known as payment method or distributed share method. National income is calculated by summation of factor incomes paid out by all production units in the domestic territory such as wages, salary, rent, interest, profit included. Payment will include both residents as well as non-residents. But money is earned or money is coming in our country. So NDP factor cost sum of factors income paid out by all the production units within the domestic territory whatever they have produced and whatever income they earn and compensation of employees is nothing but wages and salary plus operating surplus is your rent profit and interest plus mixed income you already know income from different sources which cannot be distinguished plus NFIA. So put a star mark, this looks very important, one sum is expected from this formula, NNP factor cost. So compensation of employees plus operating surplus plus mixed income plus NFIA. 
students in the question operating surplus is given ok maybe say example 25,000 example separately rent is also given separately profit is also given separately interest amount is also given please ignore that operating surplus amount you will take while solving separate rent separate profit separate interest amount please ignore they may, they may give you to confuse you so this was your income and uh, all these things will be included while calculating income and please remember unearned income should not come see pensions of workers will be excluded now coming to the last that is which method expenditure method also known as outlay method this India is not using in fact any major country is not using expenditure method now students national expenditure national output national income national product all are one and the same because one man's expenditure is another man's income so your national income is calculated from expenditure side whatever final expenditure in the economy during an accounting year okay so i will write here first is final private final consumption expenditure now what is this private final consumption expenditure so whatever expenditure we people do on goods which households consume clothes shoes mobile car accessories handkerchief mask then all re related food items list is endless specs wallet many things so it will include everything households non-profit institutes everything then government final expenditure government is spending money on infrastructure dams roads bridges highways metro maintenance cleanliness education so that will come all expenditures done by government that is c g gross domestic capital formation is nothing but investment it includes your inventory entrepreneurs have done investment in buying machines tools equipments so that will come net exports that is x minus m so all exports are added so consumption expenditure plus investment expenditure plus government expenditure plus expenditure on imports and exports that is net exports so just to remind you or just to give you a hint please remember while solving numerical sums any statement or any line ending with the word expenditure should be added like gross private residential construction expenditure this much big they have given but last word is expenditure please add inventory expenditure please add so anything ending with the word expenditure to be added in gdp and anything ending with the word investment should also be added in gdp financial investment will not come huh? all other investments will come so last time i will repeat anything ending with the word expenditure anything ending with the word investment both will be added while calculating gdp so this was very simple okay now let's go to gdp and welfare gdp and welfare now what is this gdp and welfare now students here there are few points which will tell you that sometimes countries GDP increases but people may not get welfare there won't be welfare for the people or sometimes there is a welfare to the people but there is no addition in gross domestic product or sometimes you get both there is welfare also there is rise in GDP also so basically we are going to understand the mixture of GDP and welfare students please understand GDP is quantitative addition GDP is increase in output increase in numbers welfare basically represents well-being of the people GDP and welfare coming together becomes development let us understand 
first point income distribution and therefore gdp per capita this is nothing but your per capita income is completely inadequate measure of welfare countries may have significantly different income distribution and consequently different level of overall well being for the same level of per capita income now here what they are saying like if country's per capita income increases it means country's gdp has gone up now that doesn't mean higher per capita income means always higher welfare no countries may have same per capita income but welfare may differ from country to country because every country may not run on the same parameter same measures everyone's income distribution may not be same there could be high level of income inequality like if i give the example say example india's per capita income is dollar 2000 so it is nothing but the average income of all the indians national income divided by total population but can i say everyone on piece of paper we say everyone's income is dollar 2000 dollar 2000 dollar 2000 but can i say the major chunk the major income or major wealth is accumulated by top 10% of our population that is adani sambani smital tata hindujas ruyas that means the ma major wealth creation ma major wealth accumulation is only with top 10 or 20% of the population so highly income is unevenly distributed so you can't say that higher per capita income means higher welfare no because everyone's income is not same everyone's standard of living is not same welfare is also not same moving to the second point quality improvement in systems and processes due to technological as well as managerial innovation reflects the true growth in the output from year to year students quality improvement suppose a product is of good quality people will come people will purchase people will buy people will get benefit welfare but only quality no it should be can i say along with quality there should be more quantity to be produced then only there will be increase in gdp only quality products no it should be quality plus quantity more output should be produced so that there is a welfare plus there is increase in gross domestic product third production hidden from government authorities either because they are engaged in evading taxes or they may be involved in some illegal activities so students people may be involved in drugs black marketing hoarding wrong activities such transactions are not been disclosed if they are disclosed it will get recorded our gross domestic product may rise so even though people earn money people have some welfare by consuming such things people may get utility out of such things but such transactions since they are illegal may not be recorded next non market production with few exceptions and non economic contributors for well being example health of a country citizen non market production means does not have a price intention is not to earn money or to sell a product health of a citizen education level political participation other social and political factors may significantly affect well being levels if country has a good health infrastructure for everyone hospital beds are available there is enough supply of oxygen can i say people will get timely treatment people will get themselves cured on time good education system encourages or increases the knowledge level and decision making ability see all these things these all are social infrastructure education health good government good governance good political stability all these things may not directly add to gdp may not increase country's growth but all these things if they are put properly if they are available properly if they are working properly then people will be very happy citizens will be very happy there will be overall well being of the country so three things are important there should be political stability second health infrastructure education infrastructure should be at par should be at per global levels but unfortunately our country spends very less 
on health that is hardly not even 2 percent of our GDP. Next the utility of loss of leisure time we know that other things remaining same countries GDP rises with total number of hours of work increases see logic is very simple leisure means relaxation leisure means to stay back home not to work relax. So, if there is more of such leisure activities people will be happy people will have a good family time people will enjoy productivity may rise the next day but students please understand higher the leisure time higher the leisure time lower will be the growth because if I do not work for next 3 days if I only relax relax and relax for next 3 days can I say to that extent less services will be produced. I may take less number of lectures for next 3 days and to that extent less amount I will be earning and that means less income will be recorded in national income it may impact GDP national income growth. But more number of hours I put more I produce goods and services more I work higher will be the country's GDP. So, leisure and GDP. So, higher the leisure time lower can be GDP growth and lower the leisure time higher will be the GDP growth because people are spending more number of hours at work producing more number of goods and services growth has to increase. Next economic bads example crime pollution traffic congestion may make situation worse off. So, city all metro cities Bangalore, Chennai, Mumbai, Delhi, Kolkata can I say all these big cities are blessed with huge traffic problem pollution problem congestion things are getting delayed people are not able to reach their office on time spending less hours at their workplace mentally physically exhausted because of this traffic and pollution see all these things may impact person's contribution towards his work more problem related to pollution health problems too much of traffic things may get delayed too much of crime men or women will not be ready to work in night shifts and if people will not work in night shifts can I say to that extent less goods or less services will be produced. So, even crime makes pollution makes traffic congestion makes society worse off fall in the well being loss of welfare. Next voluntary work and services rendered without remuneration undertaken in the economy even though such work can contribute to the social well being like maybe an NGO or just an help. Uh, so, I, I gave free coaching to rural kids 5th standard, 10th standard, 12th standard kids free coaching from my side that was a voluntary help for them they got an advantage well being happened their welfare happened but since it was voluntary I have not charged the price I have not earned the income can I say if money was charged if fees was charged that income could have been recorded in GDP. So, anything done out of love care affection sympathy empathy such things may bring welfare to the society may help poor people may support them there will be more of well being and welfare, but it may not add anything to gross domestic product. So, many things that contribute to economic welfare, leisure time, fairness, gender equality, security of community feeling, staying with the same community, L no biasness between male, female, equal treatment, fairness, equal opportunity, relaxation time, leisure time, all these things will make person happy, welfare, well being increases, but may not bring anything new or may not add anything new to gross domestic product. So, students this comes the last point distinction between production that makes better off and production only prevents us from becoming worse off like defense expenditure police. Increase expenditure on police increases in crime may also increase GDP, but this expenses may prevent us from becoming worse off. More crime, more defense, more police force 
more fire brigade, more ambulance facility, more of such services will be produced. Definitely GDP will increase, but can I say people, you are just preventing people from becoming worse off. So directly there is no welfare. Hey, no one likes to go to a court. No one would prefer to meet a policeman. No one would like to get admitted in the hospital. But since we don't want to make things worse, we want to get it rectified, get it cured, get it resolved. So we go, we approach. So such services, police, defense, hospitals, court, they just prevent people from making situation worse off. They will reduce that worse off situation. So your GDP rises, but there is no direct welfare to the people. It only prevents people from making situation worse off. That's it. So there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, total 9 points for 2 marks, 5 to 6. I have already told 5 points sounds good. For 3 marks, 7 points, maximum 8 points. This was GDP welfare. Now coming to the next question that is limitations of national income. Now students please understand whatever sessions we are taking it is purely revision series for inter CA. We have already taught you in detail everything in live zoom lectures. So my only request would be it will be really important that you should have attended those revision those live lectures and then you need to see these lectures then things becomes very easy for you quickly you will understand so going ahead two types of difficulties conceptual difficulties and other challenges first is lack of agreed definition of national income so many different different economists have given different definitions for national income so which definition is correct which definition is more appropriate which definition is more right difficult to find so, there is no precise definition for national income because in India, calculating national income may not be 100% accurate. There are n number of problems, n number of loopholes. There are few things which are to be added and there are few things which are to be deducted, but that has not happened. So, there is no precise or very appropriate definition for national income. That is again a difficulty. Second, accurate distinction between final goods and intermediate goods. Now, sometimes country or CSO finds it difficult to identify whether the product is a final product or intermediate product. Exact calculation becomes difficult. Like milk is a final product for an household, but same milk may not be a final product for a milk dairy. Hey, can I say with milk dairy, the person who is selling milk in the shop, he may use that milk for preparing cheese, shrikhand, paneer and he may sell it further. So for him it is an intermediate product but the same milk is a final product for an household. So accurate distinguish, accurate differentiation between intermediate goods, final goods is very difficult. Then issue of transfer payment. Now transfer payment means unearned income, pension, charity, donation, scholarship, all those things. A student, a person who is receiving pension, a person who is receiving donation, for him that income is unearned because neither goods nor services are produced. And what we do, we ignore unearned income. But can I say the person who is giving pension, for him it is an expenditure. And I had only told you that anything which is an expenditure should be added. But since India is not using expenditure method, so that angle is ignored. But if you consider that, then can I say pension, charity, donation, one person is giving. So for him, it is an expenditure and it should be added as per expenditure method. But from income point of view, from income method point of view, we have to ignore saying it is unearned. See, one method says ignore. Another method says add. There is a confusion, issue. There is an issue in calculating transfer payment. Services of durable goods like uh, services related to a car, a mechanic is giving service and sometimes what happens we make payment to him in a form of cash. 
So, even though services is been produced on durable goods, but since the payment is made through cash, that amount may not get recorded, that amount may will never come to know to CSO, that amount will never get calculated in national income. Other challenges, inadequacy of data, lack of reliability of data. Now, whatever data information which CSO receives from different different sources, many times it is incomplete data, half data, wrong data, old data, lack of reliability. So, if the data is not proper, the numbers coming from primary sector, the data coming from secondary sector, the numbers coming from service sector, if they are not accurate, if they are not reliable, if the data is incomplete or old data, can I say our country's national income calculation or GDP calculation will go wrong and that is happening. Presence of non-monetized sector, non-monetized sector means where money transactions are not involved, where a transaction to some extent looks like a barter, it is not a barter but it looks like a barter, where goods are exchanged for services money is not involved like mother cooking food is a non monetized transaction because she is doing out of love care and affection you are polishing your own shoes is a non monetized transaction unpaid services absence of recording income due to illiteracy and ignorance see india is a literate country but not an educated country sorry to say people can read and write in their respective language but they don't understand what they are doing so, illiteracy and ignorance is a very big factor responsible of not having proper information because people do not maintain books of accounts, they do not file income tax returns, they do not have a bank account, they do not update their passbook, Are first of all they do not want to go to the bank, they prefer more of cash transaction, this, this, this you will find more in rural areas, illiteracy, ignorance people do not know what is right, what is wrong. Today also they prefer taking loans from money lenders and zamindars. If they are more towards banking, if they time to time update their passbook, if they file income tax returns, then can I say proper information, data regarding person's income, expenditure will reach the government that is CSO. So, because of this again country has to face the problem. And last accurate estimation of consumption of fixed capital, students consumption of fixed capital is nothing but depreciation. Like while calculating national income what we do from GDP we minus depreciation and we get national income, but minus depreciation is ok, but amount is not fixed, amount varies, I will give you the example. Now, students in, in 2021, say example, I purchased a brand new bike for 90,000 rupees and after two months, same year, same year, after two months, I decided to sell that bike. Now, I went to the first vendor, first vendor. Now, he is looking at the bike, checking the condition of the bike, looking at the papers and he is telling me that he is going to give me 80,000 for this bike. Now, how much depreciation he has charged 10,000. I, I had purchased for 90 and the first second hand bike vendor is ready to give me 80,000 for it. Then I went to the second vendor, second vendor. Now, he is giving me 70,000 for the same bike. Now, students, can I say this person is charging 20,000 depreciation? The point is, which amount is correct? We do not know. Why 10,000? Why not 5,000? Why 10,000? Why not 15,000? From where he got, from where the second vendor got 20,000? See, many times depreciation calculation in our country is done orally. Which method is used? How that amount is derived? Why this amount, no justification, no calculation, nothing. Machine, tools, equipments, truck, lorry, all these assets which are used in the business and depreciation unfortunately is calculated orally 
and the amount differs from vendor to vendor. One is giving me 70,000, 20,000 deducted. One is giving me 80,000, only 10,000. Now, can I say I am going to sell my bike to the first vendor? So, can I say higher the depreciation, lower will be the national income and lower the depreciation, higher will be the national income? Now, because of this calculation goes wrong. CSO never comes to know whether the depreciation amount is accurate, reliable, correct, true or false. That is nothing but consumption of fixed capital that is depreciation calculation. So, students these were limitations of national income, two parts conceptual difficulties and second was other challenges. Now, moving to the next question that is a deflationary gap and inflationary gap. So, this is newly added in your syllabus. In detail, we have already done in our main lectures. Now, quickly we will revise. Now, there are two diagrams, one for deflation, one for inflation. Now, what is deflationary situation? Deflation means fall in price. It's a starting point for recession. So, after economy reaches the peak, so just to tell you, after the economy reaches peak, there will be a demand saturation. Economy will start contracting a bit. So, moment the economy starts contracting, that situation gives birth to deflationary situation. That is fall in the price of goods and services. Now, students may think fall in price is good. So, students fall in price is not good because producer may not earn. Intentionally, he need to reduce the price because there is no demand or there is less demand. So, when aggregate demand is less than full employment level, repeat, repeat, when aggregate demand is less than full employment level, that point or that situation gives deflationary gap or deflationary situation. So, producers may lose money, they may not earn profits, people are not ready to spend, people are not ready to come out of the house, either they have lost their income, jobs or there would be complete demand saturation where people have everything with them, property, assets, clothes, shoes, furniture, TV, AC, refrigerator, everything they have, all comforts and luxuries already they have, now they don't want to spend more. That could also be the reason. And economy starts contracting, economy starts going down, that leads to deflation. If deflation is not controlled, it may lead to recession. And if recession is not controlled, depression. So, deflationary situation is not good. So, look at the diagram. Right hand side, I have written when aggregate demand is less than full employment level. Now, I have taken upward sloping income line that is why then you will find C plus I zero. So, this is your aggregate demand meets income at point E and the current level of output or I would say national income is OM. Now, because of fall in demand, lack of money, people not spending, producer not earning, what has happened? This aggregate demand has shifted downwards. That is C plus I has shifted downwards and it has become C plus I1. It means there is a fall in aggregate demand. Now students, this point E, this point E was called as which point? Full employment point where economy was doing good. People had money, people were spending, aggregate demand was healthy. That time income, country's output, country's national income, country's GDP was OM. Now, since demand has gone down, so curve will shift downwards and new equilibrium point will be E1 and this point is called as unemployment level where resources are not fully utilized. The resources are not put to proper use, underutilization, unemployment, bad situation. And movement aggregate demand that is C plus I curve moves downwards. Can I say 
national income will also reduce reduce country's gdp will also reduce from om we have gone backwards to om1 so this was your deflationary situation please understand here there is a deficiency in demand what 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 there is a deficiency in demand for goods and services people are not spending producer is not earning and there could be a possibility where producer may start removing people may start reducing jobs may not give full salary there can be financial or economic crisis coming in the economy but deflationary situation can be controlled by the government by taking appropriate action like reducing tax or central bank may reduce rate of interest money becomes cheap and slowly 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 again people start borrowing people start spending so there is solution available but as of now you only remember when aggregate demand is below full employment level deficiency in demand what deficiency in demand the curve shifts downwards so in deflationary situation there is fall in gdp fall in output and if you can see here this gap the gap between two curves is deflationary gap which gap deflationary gap let's go ahead the second part is inflationary gap now exactly opposite of deflation is inflation inflation is rise in price of goods and services more money chasing few goods people have money but in the market the supply the quantity of goods available is less so students deflation opposite is inflation deflation was fall in price inflation is rise in price so exactly opposite we need to say when aggregate demand is more than full employment level higher than full employment level price will go up aggregate demand will shoot up and along with that country's output country's gdp will also increase always remember inflation and gdp they have direct relation so when aggregate demand is more than full employment level so y is your income line starting from the origin then i have taken c plus i this is c plus i zero they both meet at point e now point e becomes full employment level where economy is doing good economy is doing normal economy is doing fantastic now the same curve shifts upwards because of higher demand because of surplus demand so same curve shifted upwards and it becomes c plus i1 new equilibrium point is e1 e1 is the point which is way above full employment level e1 is a point which is way above full employment level so at that point demand is very high gdp is increasing people are spending people are spending people are spending so demand exceeds supply simple more money chasing few goods so then this gap if you are able to see this gap gap between two curves is inflationary gap because aggregate demand has increased it was initially om now it is om1 output gdp output gdp has risen so this is your inflationary gap exactly opposite to deflation can come for two marks or maybe three marks but i will request you all wherever possible please support your answer with a diagram wherever possible so students in our notes you can observe answer is already given precise answer is given for inflation deflation study this much support your answer with diagram and you score very good marks so students we are done with deflationary gap inflationary gap moving to the next question that is what is consumption function 
So students, two questions back to back we will do what is consumption function and second what is savings function. Now first of all please understand consumption means nothing but act of using goods and services. So moment you purchase, moment you start using any goods or services that is the act of consumption. Now this concept is given by J.M. Keynes, he has given a one concept that is psychological law of consumption. Now basically according to him C is a function of Y, according to him C is a function of Y that is consumption is a function of income. Now students please understand as income of the person increases his consumption also increases. We may start buying more goods and services. We may start consuming more goods and services. But again when his income increases, his consumption may increase. But when again his income increases, this time his consumption will increase but at diminishing rate. The slope may become a bit flatter. Because initially when income increased, he has fulfilled all his wants and needs. Initially his income increased, he has fulfilled all his, all his needs and desires. So please understand now when his income again increases this time consumption will definitely increase but in diminishing rate lesser proportion than increase in his income. So please remember higher the income that is as income rises your average consumption falls because now people may think of savings people may plan to save some money. So savings will increase at increasing rate, savings will increase at faster rate. So if you look at the table, first of all please understand income can become zero but consumption can never become zero. There are two types of consumption you people know, autonomous and induced. Now autonomous consumption is that consumption where income does not come into the picture because that consumption is not dependent on income. Even if your income is zero, autonomous consumption is going to take place. So consumption will always remain positive. It can never become zero. Like anyhow, people are going to spend money on food, clothing, health, education, ne basic necessities, survival. From anywhere person will arrange money, beg, borrow, steal, whatever. So that becomes autonomous and autonomous consumption is denoted by small a is denoted by small a. Small a represents autonomous consumption, not dependent on income. It is income inelastic. Second is induced, exactly opposite induced consumption is that consumption which is dependent on income. It can become zero. It will fluctuate according to the income. So basically money spent on comforts and luxuries, buying a new house, buying a new car, jewelry, diamonds, expensive or lavish wedding, all these things are possible only when you have higher income. So then that consumption becomes what? Induced in nature. An induced consumption is written as small b and complete formula becomes c is equals to a plus b y. Why I have written y? Because induced consumption is dependent on income. That's why represents y, y represents income. So C consumption is nothing but autonomous plus induced. Now income can become zero but as I told consumption can never become zero. So if you look at the table income initially is zero but consumption is 500 because person is going to spend money on basic necessities. He will arrange funds from somewhere anyhow. So that time savings were negative. So income zero, consumption 500, savings negative. But is my income always going to remain zero? No. So as income rises, students, as income increases, my consumption will also increase but at diminishing rate. So 1200 divided by 1000, that is you should do C upon Y. 1200 divided by 1000, 1 1.2, 2000 divided by 2000, answer is 1. Likewise, 2600 divided by 3000, if you do, the average consumption will fall. 
so what you should say income increases consumption also increases but at diminishing rate savings increases at faster rate minus 500 minus 200 then becomes 0 400 700 1000 so again s upon y s upon y s upon y if you do you will come to know savings will rise at faster rate so last time i am repeating as income of the person increases his consumption also increases but at diminishing rate savings will increase at faster rate so please remember two lines as person's income rises its consumption and savings both rises consumption rises at diminishing rate savings rises at increasing rate so in the diagram three things you will be able to see savings are zero savings are positive savings are negative so look at the diagram diagram is very simple this is your income line starting from the origin because income can become zero this is your consumption consumption line is not starting from the origin because consumption can never become zero so this gap i would put it as o a this gap o a is your autonomous consumption is nothing but which consumption autonomous consumption so now can i say b is the point where c equals to y b is the point where c equals to y where consumption is equal to income so that time savings will be zero now if i go to the right what you are able to see can i say your income is more and consumption is less income line is above consumption line is below so y greater than c so this part this part will give you savings because income is more than consumption left hand side if you see left hand side what you are able to see students can i say this is consumption and this part is income so this time consumption is above income is below consumption is more than income so i would write c is greater than y this part will give you this savings so your savings are positive savings are negative and your savings are zero so students please understand if you want to talk about savings then you need to first speak about consumption and income so can i say triangle o a b triangle o a b denotes this savings have a look find which triangle triangle o a b triangle o a b denotes this savings point b denotes savings are zero and after point b savings rises at increasing rate savings increases at increasing rate so students table diagram both are important if consumption function is asked this question was asked once till date and precisely it was mentioned in the question draw table and diagram so students this was about consumption function let's move to the next that is savings function now students if c is the function of y then s is also the function of y please remember savings is also dependent on income so can i say higher the income higher the savings lower the income lower the savings so if you want to understand or if you want to derive savings curve first you should have income curve and consumption curve without income and consumption you cannot derive savings because formula for savings is y minus c income minus consumption gives you savings so please remember savings is a counter part of consumption function repeat repeat savings is a counter part of consumption function savings curve will be derived through consumption function now this is panel one this is panel two panel two has derived from panel one like pay attention can i say if i want to understand what is the level of savings at o b level of savings at ob then i will go to panel one what you are able to see can i say your 
consumption is more and your income is less consumption is more and income is less so can i say savings will be negative or i would say it will be dis savings so negative means above x axis or below x axis below x axis so student your savings line will start below x axis then it will reach a point which is on x axis where savings are zero why savings are zero because here it is c equals to y income is equal to consumption here it was c greater than y so savings were negative and after point b look at the above panel panel 1 after point b income is more consumption is less savings will become positive positive means it will go above x axis it will go above x axis and you can see your students you derive upward sloping savings curve repeat repeat you derive upward sloping savings curve where one part is below x axis one part is on x axis one part is above x axis so savings can be positive zero negative and please understand this savings line this red color savings line is derived because of income and consumption so if they ask a question separate question on savings function i request you all please draw this diagram explanation is given below you can see here write this mostly it should come for two marks so always remember it should be first diagram and then explanation it should not be vice versa many students commit that mistake they first explain then they draw the diagram no i want diagram first and then the explanation so just now we completed two things consumption function and savings function now let's move to the next question that is circular flow of national income two sector model now students three questions will come back to back one is two sector second is three sector third will be your four sector model so focus more on four sector model because four sector includes your two as well as three so this is a hypothetical situation only two things that will be c plus i that is your consumption plus investment that is nothing but your household and business so only two sectors will be taken into consideration now how things goes pay attention now can i say households are the consumers of goods and services and business is a producer of goods and services we people go out we people work and we people earn money and after that money comes we spend that money and ultimately business earns because we people spend see ultimately the money is going to rotate from one sector to another how it will go look at the upper part of the diagram can i say households provide factor services to business households provide factor services to business which means we will go out we will work in a company people work in bajaj auto people work in infosys people work in different different offices so if entrepreneur is giving service to his business he will earn profit laborer employees will get wages and salary rent will receive land will receive rent so please understand households are the owners of factors of production land labor capital so households give services to business in return in return what is happening business is giving factor payment to household business is giving factor payment to household so households gave factor services to business and in return business gave factor payment to household because are we going to work for free are we going to work for free no now in this i have taken an example with savings and investment two sector is without savings and investment but here itself i am explaining you with savings and investment so can i say moment households will receive some salary money some part they will save where they will save they will save money in the bank and what bank is going to do bank is not going to keep that money idle bank is going to use that money for giving loans to corporates 
and what corporates will do they will invest that money what they will do they will invest that money so students please understand savings only savings is not good because if you save money cash in hand money kept in your savings account current account but if that money is not utilized if money is not invested if money is not put to some productive use then it should become a leakage it should become what leakage leakage represents money not rotating in the economy money not generating income that is called as leakage so students please remember savings are leakages but if savings are converted into investment it becomes a injection so savings greater than investment leakages and investments are greater than savings injection so this was the upper part now some part was saved can i say remaining part we people will spend in buying goods and services so you can see here goods and services will be coming from business to household because who are the producers of goods and services business so from business goods and services will enter household but are we going to buy goods and services for free no what will happen households will make payment for goods and services whose income and whose expenditure households expenditure business income a upper part of the diagram business expenditure households income because business gave salary to the household so can i say same money is rotating like i am working earning money then spending ultimately that money reaches the business one man's expenditure is another man's income one man's expenditure is another man's income so this is your two sector circular flow very simple listen carefully in very simple language if i tell you if this is household and if this is business so can i say households provide factor services to business and in return business gives factor payment this is factor payment whose income and whose expenditure business expenditure household income what we will do some part we will save where we will save save in the bank bank is going to give loan and ultimately that money will be invested now can i say business is going to produce goods and services consumer is going to consume goods and services so can i say from business goods and services will enter my house but is it going to purchase am i going to purchase it for free no i am supposed to make payment so households will make payment to business now whose income and whose expenditure households expenditure business income this is your circular flow one man's expenditure is another man's income and please remember savings are more it means leakages are more but if investments are more than savings i would say more injections so always remember injections should be greater than savings but in two sector savings are equal to injections savings are equal to injections or i would say leakages are equal to injection so say this way savings equals to investment that is leakages equal to injections in two sectors this was a very simple understanding and are you able to see the outer circle of the diagram the black color outer circle black color outer circle represents real flow it represents which flow real flow output goods and services output represents real flow and the inner circle this red color inner circle represents what it represents students money flow it represents what money flow because salary is coming to the household and money is been spent on goods and services both are in a form of money that's why money flow always remember the inner line the in inside line the inner line of the diagram should always be money flow where money is going that you are supposed to show so students you can see your precise answer is given 
mention all the points then they have explained here the outer circle of the diagram the inner circle of is money flow outer is real flow and also support your answer with conclusion so can come for three marks maybe not sure with the marks depends upon the institute very easy you can definitely put it in your own words no problem now connected to two sector just now what we saw was circular flow okay precisely they will mention circular flow now if you see the diagram students this is equilibrium level of national income diagram two sector model there are two parts you can see panel one and panel two so first i am going to focus only on panel one before i start with the diagram please understand whenever i say aggregate demand another language i will use is c plus i that is consumption plus investment and whenever i say aggregate supply aggregate supply is nothing but the income line please remember aggregate supply is nothing but your income line because after you supply company or a firm or a economy receives income income is generated so that is will be your c plus s this is the language i'm going to use c plus s is aggregate supply and c plus i is your aggregate demand now look at only panel one i have taken 45 degree income line c plus s also known as aggregate supply line then i have taken c consumption then same curve shifts upwards and it becomes c plus i so this gap is i because two sector we are discussing focus should be only on point e can i say point e is the intersection of aggregate demand and aggregate supply kindly check point e is the intersection of c plus i and c plus s kindly check yes students so here i can write it is aggregate demand equals to aggregate supply that is c plus i equals to c plus s and this is the point we we where we have to stop this is the point where we have to be because we are discussing equilibrium level of national income but right hand side if you go right hand side this zone if you look at this zone can i say here aggregate supply is more and aggregate demand is less aggregate supply more aggregate demand less which means i can write here c plus s is greater than c plus i can i write here c plus s is greater than c plus i that is nothing but a is greater than ad now if supply is more than demand more goods are produced more output is already produced more supply but less demand what we will do income output employment will fall market forces will start reducing income output and employment and we may go backwards and we may stop at which point at point e so last time i will repeat right hand side the shaded area have a look can i say c plus s is more than c plus i that is aggregate supply is more than aggregate demand if there are more goods more supply more sellers but if there are less customers then what will happen to the output what we need to do with employment we need to reduce output employment income will go backwards and we will stop at point e because e is the point where c plus i is equals to c plus s aggregate demand is equal to aggregate supply left hand side this zone this shaded area left hand side now your aggregate demand is more than aggregate supply see supply line is below so i can write here c plus i is greater than c plus s that is aggregate demand is greater than aggregate supply demand more than supply have a look i will just zoom it demand more than supply more customers more people but less goods more customer more people but less goods can i say we need to produce more now so more employment more output we will shift to the right and where we will stop we will stop at a point where they both are equal and you get 
equilibrium level of national income that is OY1. You get equilibrium level of national income that is OY1. So this was your panel 1, panel A I discussed. Let's go down. Panel 2, panel 2 you are able to see a purple color horizontal line parallel to x axis that is your investment line. Investment is always autonomous, investment is kept constant because investment is not dependent on income, investment is dependent on rate of return. Please make a note. Investment is not dependent on income, it is dependent on rate of return, rate of interest. So where you will invest, when you will invest, how much you will invest that depends upon the returns that instrument gives. So please remember investment is autonomous so it is shown as a horizontal line not starting from the origin. But then we have taken a savings line upward sloping red color savings line. This red color savings line why it is upward you people know. How it is derived we have already discussed one part is below x axis one part is on x axis and one part is above x axis. So now can I say this is the point where this black color dot point where s equals to i. Now students from where you got this s equals to i see the dotted line if I take it above dotted line if I take it above can I say c and c will get cancelled this one see I will just zoom it c and c will get cancelled and what you get if you logically come down you get c s equals to i here what you will get can i say your savings are more investments are less so here it would be s greater than i here it would be i greater than s but at point e at point e look at panel 2 can I say injections are equal to leakages that is the equilibrium point which gives you equilibrium level of national income equilibrium level of output. So right hand side in leakages are more than injections I am talking about this part left hand side injections are more than leakages and at point E savings equals to investment that is leakages are equal to injection. So I request each one of you practice the diagram draw the diagram twice one with seeing second is without seeing and this is the answer which we have given point wise all points you need to cover and this is the explanation of the diagram. So I can repeat you can definitely put it in your own words completely fine no problem but try to cover all the points probably may come for three marks precisely they will write equilibrium level of national income to sector then only this diagram if they ask only circular flow the previous one which we had done. So students in two sectors there are only two diagrams one is circular flow and second one is this. And here we complete two sector circular flow. Hello students now let's move to the next question. So we are done with two sector circular flow and equilibrium for two sector two questions we have done. Now let us understand circular flow of national income four sector model and inside four sector three sector will also be explained. So I request each one of you focus more on four sector model because four sector includes all three. So you can revise your two sector also, three sector also along with your this question. So circular flow of national income four sector you can see the diagram. If they ask circular flow then only draw this diagram. Okay, pay attention and strictly diagram will be with the help of pencil. Certain underline, certain marking you can do with black pen but it should be completely pencil. Now let us understand left hand side I have taken households right hand side I have taken business then government is going to come in the picture and next is the foreign sector. This is your foreign sector. 
So four sector, we have consumption that is households, we have investment that is business, we have government and we have foreign sector exports and imports. Now let us see, can I say households provide factor services to business? Households provide factor services to business. Every day we will go out, we will work, we will provide service to them. So students in return, what will happen in return business is going to give us factor payment. You can see here business is giving us factor payment. If it is land, then it will be rent. If we are giving labor as a service, we will receive wages, salary. Then some part, whatever income will come, some part will be saved in the bank. What bank will do? Bank will give loans to the corporates, to the businessmen. Ultimately, it will lead to investment. Now, savings greater than investment, I would say leakages are more than injection. And if investments are more than savings, I would say injections are more than leakages. Remaining money, can I say it will be spent on buying goods and services? So, who produces goods and services? Business. From business, goods and services will enter our house lower part of the diagram but is it going to come for free no we are supposed to make payment so this is expenditure on goods and services payment for goods and services so this was your plain two sector now who comes government comes you can see here government is entering now government sector now households will pay households will pay what tax to the government direct tax so for government it becomes the income and government will provide transfer payments to the households like scholarship so, uh, some some kind of lpg subsidy uh, all this pension all these things government will provide so i have just put a heading as transfer payments then households provide service to government departments we people go out we people work in government companies government offices government banks so many people working with bank of baroda sbi so there are so many government companies where we people go and work and provide service to them in return government will give us money salary wages income remuneration that is factor receipts that is factor income factor receipts Students kindly keep the arrow here only because inside line represents money flow. Please remember. So this was household and government. Let's understand business and government. Can I say if household is paying tax, then business will also pay tax? Yes, business is also going to pay tax. In return, government is going to give what? Government is going to precisely give subsidies to the business. So money coming into the business and can I say government purchases so many goods and services from business. So any construction, construction of a metro, construction of a dam, bridge, flyover, so steel, cement, all this basic raw material, intermediate goods, certain spare parts, transformers, generators, crane, road roller, all these things will be purchased by the government from business. So goods will go to the government, but in return government will make payments. So it will be what factor receipts for the business. It will be what receipts of goods and services, money coming to the business. Inside line should always be money flow inside line should always be money flow now there is one more relation between government and bank so i would put it in this way so can i say if government receipts are more than government expenditure i would say there will be surplus surplus will be kept in the bank surplus will be kept in the bank but if government expenditure is more than receipts, then government needs to borrow from the bank. Then government needs to what? Borrow from the bank. So please understand 
from government arrow is going to the bank government is depositing money surplus deposited an arrow going towards government from the bank government is borrowing from the bank so this was about your government and bank now let's come to the last part that is fourth sector foreign sector now can i say let's talk about households households provide which service to the foreign country manpower service there are so many people who are settled abroad there are so many indians working with foreign companies in foreign countries to be very precise brain drain has taken place all talented youth they have shifted to foreign countries because of better opportunities and better standard of living so basically we indians are providing manpower services to foreign so in return what they are giving us in return they are giving us remittance in return they are giving us what remittance what is remittance it is nothing but transfer of money from one country to another there was a time where india was the highest receiver of remittance in the world 75 to 80 billion dollar every year because there are so many indians which are settled or infested in abroad so we are giving manpower service in return we are getting what remittance transfer of money from one place to another from foreign to india so india is receiving then i would say business and household can i say business will ex import certain goods moment we import goods will come in but can i say my dear students money will go out goods will come in but money will go out that is your import payment so money going out and last we will export also certain things so goods will go out but money will come in so it represents money flow where money is coming so students this is your four sector circular flow which includes your two sector three sector as well as four sector so this was your four sector question see same diagram is given here you can have a look the arrow should be here just a small correction rest everything is fine introduction is given no need to write such a big introduction you can make it little short this much you can write and this much you can write this is explanation for three sector receipts payment so this explains your three sector and this is your four sector again receipts payment and this completes your answer two sector we have already discussed a separate answer you can take few points from that for two sector and if they ask four sector then it will should be for three marks support your answer with the circular flow diagram and write few points related to two sector three as well as four so now this is equilibrium level of national income four sector you can see here income line they have taken as 45 degree that is c plus s plus t now t stands for tax then you have consumption line that is c plus i plus g x minus m they both meet at point e so they have not taken four levels c c plus i c plus i plus g c plus i plus g x minus m so they have directly taken the fourth level and total national income will be oy and this horizontal line is basically your i plus g plus x that is investment plus government spending plus exports all three are injections and this line will make it purple this and this red color upward sloping line is your leakages savings plus tax plus imports so can i say this is the point where s plus t plus m equals to i plus g plus x that is your equilibrium point this part leakages are more injections are less 
and this part injections are more leakages are less so this was your four sector just to tell you students s plus t plus m is your leakages and i plus g plus x is your injection so savings tax import m stands for import leakages that much amount that much money not rotating in the economy and investment plus government spending plus exports all are injections money will rotate in the economy so this was your four sector four points are given here i will request each one of you to study this precisely and properly student same three sector equilibrium is given here you can see here c c plus i c plus i plus g so this is your injection this is your leakages and this is the point where they meet so total national income equilibrium national win income will be o y 1 equilibrium national income will be o y 1 so practice two sector equilibrium practice three sector equilibrium and four sector equilibrium so two and three will look almost same and four sector is very simple very easy because directly they have taken the fourth level that is c plus i plus g plus x minus m okay students for this also answer is given here you can see explanation of diagram equilibrium level of income three sector from year till year circular flow you should be thorough this is precise for three sector which we have already discussed so if you study four sector properly no need to study three sectors separately it by default includes so just to tell you students this is what we did in the previous video about two sector below that you will find proper answer been given this was equilibrium level two sector model then this is your three sector circular flow you can see here and this is your three sector equilibrium and just now what we did was the four sector model circular flow so this is done okay students now quickly we will see a small very small concepts like what is apc aps mpc mps and then we move to the last question of this chapter so pay attention students now i would uh, write first what is apc that is average propensity to consume that is nothing but average consumption so the formula for apc is nothing but c upon y that is consumption upon income gives you apc i just request you to buy hard this formula and you should go so as income increases person's average consumption decreases next is mpc that is marginal propensity to consume so that is delta c upon delta y that is change in consumption upon change in income so additional consumption because of increase in income so as income increases person additional consumption may increase so that additional consumption represents marginal propensity to consume so again i request just learn the formula and go next comes aps that is average propensity to save so aps is nothing but s upon y just remove consumption put the word savings savings upon income similarly you have mps
marginal propensity to save. This is nothing but additional savings because of increase in income, additional income. So, MPS is equals to delta S upon delta Y. Or MPS is also written as 1 minus MPC. Put a star mark. Bright chances something may come from here. So, MPS is nothing but 1 minus MPC. Or you can say 1 minus B. Students, 1 minus B is nothing but induced consumption. 1 minus B is nothing but induced consumption. So, I would highlight this. I want you to be very much thorough with this part. The one which I have highlighted. So, MPS is nothing but 1 minus MPC. So, from consumption 1 represents income. From consumption if I remove, from income if I remove consumption whatever is left will be your savings. Or we can even write something like this MPC is equals to 1 minus MPS. So, this is also possible. So, from income if you minus savings whatever is left is your MPC. These were very simple basic formulas. Let us go ahead. Let us understand a very important concept that is investment multiplier also known as income multiplier. This is intro, in the question, in the exam it may come for 2 marks, say example, explain investment multiplier, write introduction, write definition, support your answer with the formula, there is one more formula, k is equals to 1 upon MPS, so this is first, this is second and this will be your third, just support your answer with the formula full stop, that's it for 2 marks. If it is for 3 marks, then you can extend a bit. So, what is investment multiplier or income multiplier? Now, students concept, investment multiplier concept is given by J. M. Keynes, 1936, General Theory of Employment, Interest and Money. Now, he was of that opinion, his theory was, because of change in investment, there will be change in country's income, that is national income. But national income will increase in greater proportion than compared to change in investment. So, say example, if investment increases by 100 crore, in investment increases by 100 crore, national income will increase by 400 crore. How many times? 4 times. 4 times becomes multiplier. How many times it has multiplied? 4 times it has multiplied. So, because of change in investment, there will be change in national income, but national income will increase in greater proportion. So, investment increased by 100 crore, but national income increased by 400 crore. How many times it has increased? 4 times it has increased. 4 times represents multiplier. How many times investment is multiplied in order to get country's national income? But this word, but this word only multiplier, this word multiplier was given by which uncle? R.F. Khan in 1931. Now, he was of that opinion that because of change in investment, there will be change in employment. He was like there will be change in employment. So, according to him, it was which multiplier? Employment multiplier. Students, he was not wrong, but his approach was little micro. Who took it forward? Who redesigned? Who redefined the concept? Keynes. And what Keynes told? Because of change in investment, there will be change in national income. That's why this concept is known as Keynes investment multiplier, also known as income multiplier. So, this is your basic introduction. Definition goes like this. Investment multiplier is a ratio of final change in income to initial change in investment. Because of what? What is changing? Because of investment, national income is changing and that also in greater proportion. So, it is a ratio of final change in income to initial change in investment. Formula, there are total three formulas, delta Y upon delta I, then 1 upon 1 minus MPC and K is equals to 1 upon MPS. So, can I say this formula will give you this, so both are almost same. And here, students, K denotes 
वॉट मल्टीप्लायर के डिनोट्स वॉट मल्टीप्लायर के स्टैंड फॉर मल्टीप्लायर Based on three assumptions, MPC should be constant, economy should be closed economy. One man's expenditure is another man's income. You can see the working. Suppose government decides to invest hundred crore in factory expansion. A government is spending in constructing a factory or setting up a big unit. Can I say people will get employment, people will get job? So I would say income of the employee will be hundred crore. One government is spending. then steel industry cement industry construction workers iron wood industry everyone will get work so one man's expenditure would be another man's income here we have assumed what we have assumed mpc should be taken constant mpc means consumption so at every stage at every stage a person is going to spend 75% of his or her income so i have taken mpc as 75 percent just an example mps will be 25 percent example so mpc is taken as 75 percent so 100 into 75 that is 75 percent of 100 leads to 75 crore so income whatever people received 100 crore from that they will spend 75 crore in buying goods and services and that 75 will become what income of the producer who produces goods and services producer so 75 crore will become income of the producer again one man's expenditure another man's income very simple logic moment you earn money and moment you spend can i say a grocery shopkeeper will earn money a departmental store will earn money a mall person will earn money that is a producer getting now 75 crore but now can i say he is also going to spend 75 into 75 upon 100 that is 56.25 crore at every stage person is going to spend 75% of his income and dot 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 indicates to be continued it will continue see the table very simple change in investment change in income change in consumption change in savings we started with 100 that becomes the income of the people from that people decided to spend 75 and they decided to save 25 now can i say first person expenditure will be second person's income he will also spend 75% now that comes to 56.25 so 75 minus 56.25 18.75 again second person's expenditure third person's income third person's expenditure fourth person's income likewise you can get delta c delta s so this is the calculation k is equals to 1 upon mp s 1 upon mp s So MPS is twenty five percent. If you do twenty five percent, you get four times is the answer. Answer is four times, and K is equals to delta Y upon delta I. That is four into hundred. So here it will be four hundred. So here it will be what four hundred. So likewise, you got delta y as four hundred. So this is your four hundred. And can I say seventy five percent of four hundred will be three hundred, and twenty five percent of four hundred will be hundred? So students, please understand. Numerical sums can come. Calculate delta c. Calculate delta y. Calculate delta i. Throw b. Throw with three formulas. First, k is equals to delta y upon delta i. Second k is equals to one upon one minus M P C, and third is k is equals to one upon M P S. Diagram is given. You have forty-five degree income line. Then it is C plus I. Then it is C plus I plus I one because what is changing? Investment is increasing. See, investment is increasing by this much level, A E delta I, but national income increases by Y Y one level. 
सो कैन आई से वाई वाई वन इज ग्रेटर देन ए ई दैट इज फोर हंड्रेड इज ग्रेटर देन हंड्रेड सो योर इनकम गैप शुड बी मोर and this gap should be less then your diagram will be correct and below the explanation of diagram is given you can put it in your own words so this is your investment multiplier so just to sum up very simple Investment multiplier whole concept given by J.M. Keynes, 1936. According to him, because of change in investment, there will be change in national income, but country's national income will increase in greater proportion. But the word multiplier was given by R.F. Kahn. He was of that opinion because of change in investment, there will be change in employment. But his concept was not wrong. According to him, it was employment multiplier. But who took it forward? Who redesigned Keynes? So what he told. Because of change in investment, there will be change in country's national income. He gave a macro touch. Then definition you will write ratio of final change in income to initial change in investment. After that, three formulas: K is equal to delta Y upon delta I, K is equal to one upon one minus M P C, and K is equal to one upon M P S. Three assumptions: M P C should be constant. India is a closed economy. it means we are not talking about imports and exports closed economy means and third one man's expenditure is another man's income and the precise table likewise working you need to understand in the exam you are not supposed to write working neither you are supposed to draw the table table working will help you during numerical sums if they ask diagram then only draw the diagram if they tell you to explain then only explain otherwise introduction definition formula looks good so overall the answer will look big but don't worry in the exam you are not supposed to write such a big answer relax so this completes your investment multiplier now there can be a separate question on leakages of working of multiplier leakages means money not rotating in the economy what which are those factors which will reduce multiplier which will impact multiplier first is paying off debts debts means loan if people have repaid the debts or if country has repaid the loan to other country so can i say nothing productive has taken place money went out of india unproductive expenditure same money could have been used for some development of infrastructure it could have been a injection so paying of debt is not productive holding of idle cash balance cash in hand not good money should be kept in the bank bank will use that money for giving loans and your savings will get converted into investment multiplier process will start fast so holding cash cash in hand is a leakage imports precisely money going out of the country so you can say it is definitely a leakage imports are injection but export is an injection students import money going out export money coming in so export will be a in export will be a injection and import will be a leakage next is taxation now what is taxation government taking tax direct tax corporate tax so government is taking away a part of our purchasing power so higher taxes can i say our purchasing power reduces we will have less money to spend so please remember import is a leakage tax is also leakage cash in hand also leakage paying of debt nothing productive happening leakage increase in price that is inflation so can i say because of rise in price people will spend less less money will rotate less will be the consumption multiplier will be impacted students multiplier 
will increase or the multiplier percentage will be more k will be more only when people spend spend and spend then old purchase of shares and securities now very simple already listed shares already listed in secondary market if you buy those shares your money is not going to reach the company or the organization the money will go to the seller of those shares at the time of ipo company raised the money that money was utilized for some development activity ipo is a primary market whereas all the shares and securities secondary market already listed like itc infosys tcs reliance bajaj auto all these companies escorts all these companies already listed so purchase of old shares and securities which market secondary market is a leakage so you are buying shares selling shares buying shares selling shares in the economy there is no direct impact so i would request this looks important separate question can come on leakages write the six points now there is one small question which is connected to four sector but the precise they have told your imports are greater than exports leakages are more than injections so what will happen if imports are more than exports can i say country's income will reduce so this is your income line 45 degree then this is your consumption c then it will be c plus i then it is c plus i plus g but now since imports are more than exports my dear students what will happen this curve this yellow color curve will become little flatter and it will cut national income below its original equilibrium so original equilibrium is e and new equilibrium is somewhere here e1 so country's national income was initially oy now it has reduced and it has become oy1 so we have gone backwards national income has reduced this diagram you will draw only when they mention imports are more than exports then only you will touch the diagram so basically if i give you the rough idea this is the pattern you will follow students see students this is your income line c c plus i c plus i plus g but then it will be c plus i plus g plus x minus m so students you can see here this is your original equilibrium this is your new equilibrium so initially national income was how much it was oy now it has reduced it has become oy1 it has reduced so see to it the intercept should be above c plus i plus g line huh? the purple line should start from above intercept should be above c plus i plus g only thing is it will become little flatter it will cut income line below its original equilibrium so this part so something like this you need to draw in the exam but if they ask only then you will touch precisely they will mention imports more than exports full fledged answer is given my dear students write in your own words or i would prefer study this answer properly by heart this answer write as it is if this question comes so many students find too lengthy so i will give you the precise marking so this much you can write if you prefer so marking i have already given you can come for 3 marks maybe for 2 marks but i again and again i will repeat wherever possible irrespective of the marks whether it is 2 marks or 3 marks please support your answer with diagram formula definition wherever is possible it will speak volumes about you you will score very good marks presentation should be very neat 
If you are writing definition in investment multiplier, put it in box. Formula systematically put it in box. Then you start with introduction, definition, formula, diagram, explanation, whatever. So it should be very crystal clear, neat and clean, presentable, legible. So students, this was your chapter number one. These are the main main things you are supposed to study and few numerical sums we are going to discuss. One sum will be on income method, one will be expenditure method, one will be on product method and just you will get a rough idea because majority of sums we have solved in the class in the main lectures. So I request you to refer those lectures for complete solution, detailed solution. But since it is a revision, quickly we will do a recap of few important numerical sums. Now students, just we will quickly discuss few numerical sums which may be asked in the exam, completely based on national income. Now have a look, first question is very simple, it's very plain simple sum. Like compute national income they have given, that is nothing but NNP FC you are supposed to find. Consumption is given, that is your C. Investment is given, that is your I. Government purchase, that is your G. Export import is given, X minus M. So simple formula you use C plus I plus G plus X minus M. Accordingly you calculate, you get the answer. Very simple. Go with the flow. Solve vertical. That is the main thing you need to understand. So answer should be, if I calculate answer should be NNP, factor cost should be 1 triple 0 should be the answer. Once you calculate, you will get the answer. Let's go to the second sum. Calculate GDP, MP and national income say are, they are saying. This is nothing but NNP, again factor cost. Now please remember two things, any word or any statement or any line ending with the word investment to be added in GDP and any line ending with the word expenditure also to be added in GDP. So first is personal consumption expenditure, you will add indirect taxes and subsidies, later we will use, this is nothing but your net indirect tax. Then state government consumption investment expenditure add, central government consumption investment expenditure add, last word is expenditure, change in inventory add because here we are talking about closing stock minus opening stock inventory which is produced in the current year. You will add gross private domestic fixed investment, please add last word is investment, exports and imports you will take it together, that is your X minus M net factor payment, net factor payment to abroad. Now my dear students, please be very careful. Net factor payment to abroad means money is going out of the country. So what we do? We minus. But students here already sign is minus. Already the sign is negative. Then this minus, this minus will become plus. Now students, payment negative means money has come from abroad. It is actually NFIA. So you will add 100 rupees. You will add depreciation later on. It will help you. So please remember while calculating GDP, while calculating GDP MP, don't touch four items. First NFIA, second depreciation, third indirect tax, fourth subsidy. Don't touch depreciation. You will use when you want to calculate net NFIA when you want national and IT and S that is indirect tax and subsidy if you want to jump from MP to FC. So by adding all this you should get 10,000 and 10,000 will be your GDP MP and then you will add NFIA that is 100 then you will minus depreciation Depreciation is 200 minus indirect tax subsidy that is 150. 
so after you calculate you will get 9750 will be your NNP FC this should be answer for your this sum so I request you all to calculate go systematically first calculate GDP MP then take that amount below 10,000 GDP MP 10,000 and then minus depreciation minus indirect tax and plus NFI so this is also a similar sum you are supposed to do it now I will take little different sum question number five you can see they are mentioning they are saying using value added method calculate GNP that is gross national product they are saying to calculate so first item is given value of output in primary sector 500 NFIA minus 20 is given value of output in tertiary sector is given value of output in secondary sector is also given government transfer payments are also given so very simple thing you will completely ignore government transfer payments nothing will come here intermediate consumption in tertiary intermediate consumption in primary intermediate consumption in secondary now first of all since it is a value added method we had discussed two formulas first gva market price gva is nothing but your gdp so gva market price is equals to value of output plus val minus value of intermediate consumption what is the formula value of output minus value of intermediate consumption and second formula was sales plus change in stock minus intermediate consumption so your sales is not given closing stock opening stock not given so first formula we will use value of output minus value of intermediate consumption so value of output minus value of intermediate consumption so now here how to present pay attention first you will say write value of output in primary sector amount plus value of output in secondary sector amount plus value of output in tertiary sector amount and after you add all three you will get the answer that will be keep it as a so it should be two one double zero then next line leave one line intermediate consumption primary intermediate consumption secondary and third intermediate consumption tertiary you add all three keep it as b and once you add you get 850 then it has to be a minus b that is 2100 minus 850 answer should be 1250 but this is gdp this is gva we want gnp so minus 20 NFIA you will do answer will be 1230 GNP this will be the answer so after you solve you will come to know answer comes 1230 please ensure don't forget to minus NFIA because we are supposed to find gross national product so this was about value added method then see these type of sums calculate NDP, MP and national income see students your sales is given closing stock is given opening stock is given intermediate consumption is given then in such case what will be the formula sales plus change in stock minus intermediate consumption so sales given change in stock given intermediate consumption given accordingly please proceed so after you calculate probably answer should be 450 and 420 after you calculate everything you should get the answer as 450 420 so even these type of sums can come i will request you all to solve on your own remaining sums any which ways we have already done in the main lecture now calculate personal income and personal disposable income so first of all you should be thorough with the personal income formula 
पर्सनल इनकम इज इक्वल्स टू नेशनल इनकम प्लस इनकम रिसीव्ड बट नॉट अर्न माइनस इनकम अर्न बट नॉट रिसीव एंड पर्सनल डिस्पोजेबल इनकम इज नथिंग बट पर्सनल इनकम माइनस पर्सनल इनकम टैक्स यू गेट पर्सनल डिस्पोजेबल इनकम सो स्टूडेंट्स नेट डोमेस्टिक प्रोडक्ट एट फैक्टर कॉस्ट एट थाउजेंड इज गिवन दैट इज एन डी पी इज गिवन नेट फैक्टर इनकम फ्रॉम अब्रॉड टू हंड्रेड इज गिवन अनडिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड प्रॉफिट गिवन कॉर्पोरेट टैक्स इज गिवन इंटरेस्ट रिसीव बाई हाउस होल्ड फिफ्टीन इंटरेस्ट पेड बाई हाउस होल्ड फिफ्टीन हंड्रेड सो कैन आई से इंटरेस्ट रिसीव फिफ्टीन हंड्रेड विल बी एडेड एंड इंटरेस्ट पेड फिफ्टीन हंड्रेड माइनस सो दिस इफेक्ट गेट्स नलीफाइड फिफ्टीन हंड्रेड प्लस देन माइनस फिफ्टीन हंड्रेड जीरो सो इफेक्ट गॉन ट्रांसफर इनकम इज गिवन पर्सनल टैक्स इज गिवन Now how to go about it? Now can I say in order to solve personal income we require national income? Do we have national income? So we have NDP. So what I will do? NDP plus NFI. Already we have factor cost that will be eight thousand plus two hundred. That comes to eight thousand two hundred. Now this becomes your NNP factor cost, so your national income is ready, and now from national income eight two double zero, what we will do? We are supposed to calculate personal income. So undistributed profits are not added minus one thousand. Corporate tax not added. Remove five hundred. so that comes to 8200 add transfer payments that comes to 300 because transfer payments are added income earned but income received but not earned that comes to 7000 7000 is your personal income 7000 is your personal income now what to do From seven thousand, you minus personal income tax six y double zero becomes your personal disposable income PDI. So students, this way you need to solve. Go little slow. Be thorough with the formula. Then only you will be able to make it. Mm, then these type of sums, please do practice, students. Similar sum we had done primary, secondary, tertiary. solution is already given in the material have a look now see students this sum is based on income method calculate domestic income national income so what all things are given wages rent interest dividend mixed income undistributed profits social security contribution is given corporate profit is given net factor income from abroad is given so we are supposed to calculate gdp first and then we have to calculate nnp factor cost now please understand whenever we talk about income method it is already factor cost and whenever we talk about income method it is already net ha if they tell you to go to gross then add a depreciation otherwise it is already net so your depreciation is not given no worries so what you will do wages plus rent plus interest plus dividend everything you need to add these all are earned income social security contribution also comes corporate profit tax also you will add so that comes to I will just calculate four hundred plus three thousand plus four hundred plus two hundred plus eight hundred. That comes to nineteen eight hundred. Nineteen eight hundred. That will be your domestic income. This is NDP and. 
moment you add plus 1000 is your NFIA you get 2800. So, an NPFC will be 19800 plus 1000 this is NFIA you get 2800. So, this was related to income method I again repeat whenever they give income method it is already factor cost no there is no indirect tax no subsidy even if they gave please ignore but suppose if they tell you to calculate gross national income or GDP then depreciation will be given calculate national income and then add depreciation you will go to GDP. So, these are few sums which we have discussed these are very simple sums students gross investment is given calculate GDP both GDP market price and factor cost they are saying. So, GDP gross investment add net exports add net in and direct tax later on you will minus depreciation net they are not asking. So, as if now not required net factor income from abroad you will GDP they are saying not required private consumption expenditure you will add government purchase of goods and services you will add now see 19th sum you can have a look all solutions are given see gross investment is added net exports are added private consumption is added government purchase of goods and services added you get GDP market price and from there just minus net indirect tax you get GDP factor cost. So, whatever is asked accordingly you select the items add less add less. So, students uh, these were few sums there are around 20 sums more than in fact little more than 20 sums on national income. So, I request you all to just have a look and do practice. So, around about 8 to 10 marks would be the rough weightage of all numerical sums in your inter CA economics. It will include all the sums, huh? roughly 8 to 10 marks, a rough weightage. Okay, fine. So, this is what you are supposed to study in chapter number 1. So, unit 1 we have done, unit 2 we completed, and few sums we have discussed. Thank you.